there are five priorities we have, and we call that the what. And then there are five things we call the how we'll do it. And those priorities are as follows. Our first priority is infrastructure. Simply put, is electricity, it's roads, it's water, and it's internet and cell phone connectivity across Liberia. We have to, have to invest in infrastructure. That is the top priority. That's the basis on which we can and will do everything else. The second priority for us is job creation. There are too many unemployed, underemployed and unemployable Liberians. The unemployment rate is over 85%. And therefore job creation is our next priority, creating jobs for the Liberian people. The next priority is agriculture. We are a country that do not fear ourselves. These are things we can do for ourselves. We should be producing rice to feed ourselves. And my commitment is that by the end of my first term in office, we will be self-sufficient in rice production. And within education, we are focused on vocational training, teachers training, and adult education. But we have to educate our young people because again, that's how we can help them create jobs. That's how we can train farmers. And so these things are all linked together. And our final priority in terms of the what is health. Because you can have good infrastructure, you can have a good job, you can feed yourself, you can have great education, but if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. And so health is our fifth priority. And there we're focused on primary health care and preventive health care. So those are the what's we'll do for our people, for the Liberian people. How are we gonna do these things? The first how is we want to engage Liberians differently in the transformation of our country. We call this hearts and minds. How do we get all Liberians to participate in the changes that are required? We're gonna use arts and music and culture and reconciliation and religion all of these things, we will be deliberate in using these things to engage us as a people in this transformation process. And so we're doing some work on how we can make those things happen. The next how is that we're gonna find the money. We have to find the resources, the money, to do all of the what's I, I mentioned earlier. And the way we'll find the money is first, we'll go after waste in government. You know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't need or we pay too much for things that we do need. So for example, I believe the vehicles we buy for our government officials, we spend too much money on that. We should reduce the number of vehicles and we should buy less expensive vehicles for our government officials. We need to reduce how much they make so we can pay teachers and civil servants and police officers and the military officers and healthcare workers, people who actually do the work. We need to pay them more money and reduce the gap between those at the top and those who actually do the work. The other way we'll find the money is going after this thing called corruption. You know, corruption has been the bane of our country. It's, it's the, the primary reason why we are as underdeveloped as we are today. And we will aggressively go after corruption. The first thing we'll do is we will appoint a corruption czar, a minister in charge of corruption in the presidency that will coordinate all of the agencies that are meant to uh, find corrupt officials. Secondly thing we'll do is we'll make sure we are giving the resources, the money, the right people, the right logistics to the anti-corruption agencies, the LACC, Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the General Accounting uh, Office, the Public Procurement and Concessions uh, Commission. We will make sure they got the right resources to go after corrupt uh, officials. After that, when we find people who are corrupt, we will prosecute them, we will put them in jail, and we'll seize the assets. It will not be good enough for you just to resign. Okay. So those are the things we will do to really go after uh, corruption. I have committed that I will not take a salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it 
towards helping to fight uh, corruption. That's how important I think it is to, to us. And then the other way we'll find the money is we'll make sure we're getting full value, the full money we're, monies we're due from our natural resources. We'll look to exploit other natural resources so we can get the funds required to fund health care, to fund infrastructure, to create jobs, etc., etc. So finding the money is the second how. The next how is we want to create a government of inclusion. We want all sections of our country to be represented in the government. We want opposition political parties to be in government. Because I believe, we believe that having a government inclusion will help all of us make the right decisions. It will make sure that we're spreading the resources of our country across the entire country. And then the last two hows, one is growing the private sector. We will focus on growing the private sector so librarians can primarily benefit from that growth. No longer should librarian business people be spectators to our economy. And we want to actively support librarianization and encourage and provide credit and other facilities to librarian businesses so they can participate. And last but not least, we will use technology. We'll leverage technology to help us achieve our goals. So those are the what's in the house. I thank you. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Liberia. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Another day, another blessed day. Thank you very much. God bless you for tuning in. Yeah, we will maybe have another one hour. We will discuss for one hour or more. And let me see. Okay. So share this video, please. When you own, you can share it on your page. I will appreciate that the only thing you can do, you can also follow me on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and you type in TGN TV and you subscribe, I will appreciate it. I will appreciate your, um, I will appreciate it, please. And sometimes I go to watch it on beat screen. Uh, my son in the living room, they're watching it right now. And so guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in again. We will be here. Uh, this is what we will do until 2023. And you don't have to worry about what I have time or not. <clears throat> I understand some people ask me if I can sleep. Yes, I sleep. Some people ask me if I can work. <clears throat> yes, I'm working. And yes, I caught into my time. But the fact of the matter is that we must give the message. And today we'll be on politics, but I just want to talk about this rice issue. And I listen to people. I am a little bit disappointed in the president. I know sedition, if you listen to me right now, you will not like it because when I say I'm disappointed in the president, it sounds like an insult right now to a lot of people. You know, when I saw the president going to Freeport, it reminds me of like, like you got one of your friends who's selling something and you tell your people, you say, listen, I want to talk to them and see if I can bring the price down. Listen, the president, the government, do not import rice. We all know that. We all know the government don't import rice. The government responsibility is to regulate the price. The government responsibility is to talk to the business people. The government need to put things on paper. The government need to stand up for the people. Now, the government cannot tell me they don't know how much arrest cost on the international market at the producing place that they can't tell me they know and now my problem here is that even the government of liberia don't know how many citizens in the country right now because we have not done the census for under how many years and this government refused to carry on the census. they said they might carry on again so we don't even know the government don't even have a or data to tell us how many bag of rice that liberians will be able to use in a year. For what I see for myself, for what I saw on that video, that rest cannot even last for two months. And if that is the rice, if the amount of rice that in that put, in that warehouse, that means there's no rice on the market. If I was an advisor to the president, 
the first thing I will make the president, I will, I will tell the president to go and hear from the marketeers. Go to the people who sell outside first. They are your people. You representing them. You want to make sure that everything is in place. Do you think the market people lie? No. There's no rice. The rice is expensive. We know the reason why the rice is expensive. We all know. When you listen to the president interview and when you listen, if you ever watch the tip, the first thing they said that the business people, the, the importers, going to sell the rice for $13 or $13.50. Now, but at the same time, they're telling the retailer to sell the rice for $14. My people, let us not be stupid. You expect me to buy a rice for $13 and sell it for $14. They get back. You want me to take my, my iPad from you now? You get a rice for $13. You want to import the, the, the retailer to sell it for $14. You take into consideration the transportation. They're not delivering the rest to the retailer anymore. Now, when you listen to Miguel, Miguel was getting ready to speak and he said that the importers said they cannot sell it for that price. They want to increase the price. There should be some factors. Maybe because of the gasoline, maybe the rest increase on the market. But on the international market, there are different, different prices. You can get rice for $7 for 25 pounds. You can get rice for $10. You can get rice for $9. You can get rice for $8. Depends on the type of rice. Most of our rice, I think, come from uh, India. So all these prices, you can get rice for different, different prices. When you ship it in, yes, it is fair. They can sell rice in Liberia for $13. The, the business people, they can sell rice for $13. You can buy or eat the identical rice. Go and Google. You can go and do your research. The rest that they are selling in Liberia today, that rest is around seven to eight dollars per bag. Shipping the rice and whatsoever, yes, maybe it might be around ten dollars and whatsoever. But the taxes, you want the people to reduce these prices, but at the same time, you control the taxes. You increase the taxes, the freight, they 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 put everything increase, and then you want. Then I see. They're trying to take license from people because the people don't want to sell the rice for 14. Listen, you can't push a man. They, what, what, what the government is trying to create now is create, creating black market. Because if you can't go in my house, if I take my rice and put it in the house and say, I'm not selling it, what are you going to do? But all these things boil down to leadership. Because of lack of leadership, that is why Liberia continues to get into this problem. But we talk about agriculture, 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 but we got nothing in agriculture. And look at the statement the president made. Look at the statement the president made. Look what the president told the people. Well, they let everybody go on the farm and go make rice. This president got a farm. The president of Liberia, he ever had a farm before. He went there before to get farm, to make farm. But he telling Liberian people, you're going to go make farm. Then the president telling the Liberian people, <clears throat> the retailer that's supposed to buy the rice, if they don't come and buy the rice, how do people buy the rice to? Ego, my people. Ego. Leadership, a problem. Oh. Yeah. President Weah said he disappointed in the journalist. President Weah was on that video defending the business people. President Weah was on that video defending the business people. All these guys, what they want to increase the price. They don't want to sell the rice. The Liberian Pona. So, President Weah believe the businessmen, then the old man are selling in the market. President Weah believe the Lebanese men, Fuanin brothers, who want to increase the rice price. Because of the taxes and government officials begging them, Maggie almost said the truth. Maggie was trying to be honest when President We are intercepting here again and say, I'm flabbergasted. He said he disappointed in a journalist because the journalist gave him false news. Mr. President, 
you saying that a journalist giving false news when the people in the market are saying that we can see the rice. The rice will go buy the rice from the read from the rice store is expensive. Then a Lebanese man telling us, Oh, I'm working with the commerce ministry. I want to know who all got paper to sell rice. When this president just said that anybody can buy rice, anybody can buy rice, anybody can sell rice. It's open to anybody. Man, President, we are president, we are Liberians, and then because the love of a politician that was causing this problem in Liberia, and we don't want to speak the truth. We all know the importance of rice. And today, last budget, government have zero point four percent in the budget for agriculture. This one, they increase the budget. They got one point one. 1.1. What do you expect agriculture? Why, why, are we really serious to invest into agriculture? Eh? If you think that the rest is expensive, and one thing the president said again, the accent about the pro poor rice, the president said, and I quote, the pro poor rice is still on the market, it's in the counties, there's no problem in the county. There's a boy who called from Grand Jiden on spoon yesterday and said that he bought rice for four thousand and 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 four thousand five hundred there's a girl in the put who went to buy rice she said oh we just put our paperwork in they're going to sell the rest also for thirteen dollars you want this photo bad sell that rest for thirteen dollars by the time they put it in taxi go all the way they got to pay the rent they got to do it and they sell it for fourteen dollars it's impossible, man. It's impossible. That black market will create it right there. This president, if I was George Weir, go in the market first. The business people, you got nothing to do with them. If this government, if any other government do not have interest in this rice, you don't even waste your time with the Lebanese people. Because this government is capable enough to know how much or rest costs. And this government has the capability and to tell business people that if you want to bring rice in this country, this is what you have to sell it through. Maybe if things change, gasoline and things go up, or maybe the rice price, we will know. Maybe we'll add it 2% or whatsoever. On it. But this president went to the warehouse and defended the business people. Against the Liberian. Oh, you're not being spectator in your economy. The president went there and said, Yeah, the rest here, yeah, look at all the all the rest of what they can, 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 can go in Liberia. All that rice. If they get their amount of rest, there were no rice outside. And the journalist asking the president, Mr. But Mr. President, then why the rest is not outside? He said, Because you're carrying false news to the people. You're the one causing problem. I'm disappointed in you. Hey, President, we are president, we are. They say you love Liberia, but I don't know where the love is. I don't know. This was the same president who was just breaking his little thing down. That when scarcity and what's so tea and what's so tea, when this one go up and this one come down, and the government must make sure that the rice price remain. Listen to me. Let me play President Weir tip from from 2017. Okay. I really never understood what he said, but I bet you what President we were trying to say. He said, when things hard in a country, let me put it a simple man way. When things hard in a country, reduce the rice price. But that's not how it works. You can't tell businessmen, reduce your price. If the government going to come in to subsidize certain things, they can do it. But the fact of the matter is, there is no way rice should be expensive in Liberia. This government and past government condone it from the business people. Businessmen want to make profit. 
but because of the way you took them. Why would you want to go negotiate with the business people? Be fair to Liberian people. Be fair to the Liberian people. Do your research. Check the international market. How much this rice costs? Be fair. Don't tell businessmen to drop his price. Why do you think the business people agreed to drop the price two dollars, and it, it was nothing to them? When George Weah took over, he talked to the business people. They agreed to drop two dollars off the rice. In shake them, businessmen will not do it, but they know how much they buy in the rice. They got rice on the international. You can get rice for six dollars. They mess up one. You can get rest for seven dollars. You can get rest for eight dollars. You can get rest for ten dollars and twelve dollars. Twenty-five pounds. The rest they carry in the library, not twenty-five, they're not twelve dollars rice, they're not eight dollars rice. I bet you that rest that between the six to the seven dollars rice they take into Liberia. By the time they ship it and whatsoever the cost and all this kind of non -non nonsense, bam, it will cost to almost nine dollars. They still get profit. But because of the taxes and the begging from the government, the government continue to harass the importers so the importers will take that profit, that uh, cost something, uh, 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 taxes, and put it on the citizen. Then you tell the citizen to sell the rest for $14 too. The people who do the rest, they got to pay, they pay for transportation. They pay for, they got to rent the store. And all our rest, they just sitting there. So $1, that one dollar they will chip chip. Just out of that one dollar, they pay almost 20, 20, uh, 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 roughly about <clears throat> 25 cents for transportation. All this thing boiled down to leadership. The president down over the country. He didn't make it. The president, he get no, nothing as a president of agriculture the president cannot discuss nothing the common sense they want that are no degree that are no rocket scientist the journalist asked the president about agriculture and whatsoever what are you going to do this president took a different nine year you see why the president don't talk to the journalists you see that and then people rejoicing. Oh yeah, the president went to the port to go see the rest for himself. This president was supposed to go through the market and talk to the market women. Talk to the people who can sell rice first in the market. Say, oh man, let me hear your program. What happened? How about you can buy the bag of rice? How much for the bag of rice? How much for the bag of rice? Okay, go to the retailer. The Liberian businesses first because they're not Liberian bringing rice in the country. And you talk to the Liberian the retailer say, so how much you're buying this rest that you're selling it high? Because if the Omar paid $24 for the rice, she's going to beat in a cup. She's going to either increase the rice price because she bought it for $25 US. Now, if you start from the market and you talk to the Omar or the Pape or the children who's selling the market, from there you go to the retailer and you talk to them when you get all the information then you go to the Lebanese men and go sit to them and say listen I got to get involved what the hell going on here but the the, 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 the commerce minister cannot tell you give you no data but they just show us warehouse with rice in it why people online for rice then when they ask the webmen now, the webmen say, oh, we bear in negotiation with commerce ministry to bring people here to know who to sell. That's not the point who you sell the rice to. The people outside don't have the rice. Eh? We all know that you sell the rice to people who get license. Then you want to take the Librarian Pool license from there again? You taking the license from them when you, you it's an anode. What was that? You're trying to dictate to them how much they must sell rice because, because you're not selling, you're not, you're not a seller. You don't give for them. Josephine don't give for them. Josephine, the government officials, they don't give for them about the business people. Talk to the business people, Mr. President. Sit with them, negotiate, and say this. This is the situation here. It's easy for the government to know how much rice costs on the market. They can't tell us the government don't know. If I can sit right on this damn computer here and find a price of a rice, you telling me that the government of Liberia don't know how much the rice costs? You won't tell me they don't know? Then when they say, oh, the rice, that politics. Yes, 
the government itself make it to be politics. And we will not, we will not be a friend, we will not be in sympathy with President We are President We are is the fault, is the problem. President We are is the president of Liberia. If his ministers and other people are not working, President We are responsible. That is why we want to replace President We are. We, get him, we gave him six years. Thanks for his service. He's president, whether we like it or not. Where he stopped, we will take it from there. Other person can take it from them. But we cannot give this country back. We cannot keep, we cannot, Joe, we cannot hold the country for another six years. It will be a disaster. There is no plans. They are out of option. Nothing. Kaput. Done. Nobody know what to say anymore. I listen to the president interview at the port. I listen to it. If, if I want to lie, I will say it hundred times. But I listen to it. The only thing I maybe not to play it right now because my system and uh, 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 slow and delaying. This president said that we still got poor, poor rice in Liberia and it's still cheap. The rice is in the county. Nobody in the county having problem with rice. Only Monrovia. Only Monrovia. The president left his office went to the free port to go stand with the Lebanese people and side with them and side with these people. Oh, Jesus Christ. Our government is done. President, we are left. Your thing that, your, oh, yeah, the president went. The president go see for himself. I would never go to no damn Lebanese man's store or warehouse to go see if rice is there. The first thing I will start from the market. I will hear from my people if that's true. If that's true, you ain't get arrested. The then I will go to the other librarian men who said in the rest back bags. And I will ask and I say, What happened? Then when I finish now, when I go to the Lebanese man, I'm not going to see your damn warehouse. I'm going straight in the office. If you allow me to come from the mansion to come visit you, you know exactly that I will tell you say, why there is no rice. And when I gave you, we gave you license. We gave you license. We gave you the uh, 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 monopoly to bring the rice because you guarantee us you bring rice. So what is the problem? But the government will not say it because maybe they ain't cold with the people. But the president defend. I listen, president. And you say no rice. I thought I was no rice. Yeah, the rest all over the place there. Yeah, the people. The people said they will get the rice. Or the person not stopping nobody. They not stopping nobody from coming to buy the rice. But the people sort of come and buy the rice. The purchasing power. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh Joe, yeah. My people, that the man we voted for, but he was vest today. He was vest yesterday. He said that the journalists, the man can take the blame. Joshua will not take responsibility of whatsoever. President We are will not take responsibility of anything. He will always switch it. That the journalists, the one that are causing the problem. Journalists, the one that are lying to the people, they're giving false information. Until he called the other lady, but he said, Come here. What he needs here? I forgot his name. He said, Come here. The thing you're doing, you need to go out there and give the put the right message. What right message? Mr. President, if the rice expensive, tell the put the rice expensive. Let us prepare our, our, our pockets and let us prepare. But there is no way, no government officials can tell me they don't know how much the cost of a rice. They don't know, they can't tell us that. They can never tell us that, that President, we are, don't know how much the rest costs on the international market. India, you can tell and you can know exactly your responsibility is to regulate the price. And anybody who wants license, and you tell and say, listen, this is the situation here. You bring rice in this country, this is what you can go. This is it. But if you allow the business people to sell the rest for $13, or $13.50. You don't expect librarians to sell that rest for, 20, for $14. Transportation, the rent, and other things, they pay in to get through the port. Then the president say, oh, because when they're going through, they got to pay the person. But when we cash it, we so do the year. The president was talking like a baby. Then people say, oh, yeah, that, that rest business. You can't feed yourself already. You don't even, you're not even investing in agriculture. But we got some people in America who defend it. We say, oh, the Labrampo too damn lazy. You're going to go make farm. 
President, we are made fam. Now I want one more in the market. I want to say, you expect me. I live in Moravia. I doing everything. I graduate. I'm gonna leave from Moravia and go make fun. Why did a second go make fun? I enjoy her. President, we are wearing make fun before. When President, we are playing football. He retired. He went home. He ever made fun. Then your Liberian people, you can be insulting the Liberians in our country. There, you think that all Liberians got to make fun? Eh? Oh, I got a farm. I got a farm. What the farm doing? The people in, in the interior, they only go to someone they're eating the rice. Eh? They're eating the rice. When President Todbo said, we're preparing for the rice thing, we overthrew him. No government can get it right to invest in agriculture. You won't tell me no government in Liberia can get it right. 12 years, Ellen get it right. They were still buying the same hole, hole, buying fertilizer for farmers. That's it. At least Ellie was giving fertilizer to them. But, but this other government didn't give a damn thing. <coughs> didn't give a damn thing. Eh? All they dare is to make money. All they dare is to do this and that and that. Continue to lie to the librarian people. Lie to lie. The Lord must say, oh, uh, you hear, you hear Samuel 12, Samuel 12 say, we gave the business people money to reduce the rice. The guys think and lie. The other woman on, 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 uh, as, uh, uh, on Julia's show, talking about Samuel 12 said that they gave the business people, the importers money just so to reduce the price. It's the same thing they do with the gas. People sit down and get back wrong. Bad leadership about people suffering. No rest on the market. No rest on the market. We don't say rest is not in the warehouse. Rest in the warehouse, but it's not on the market. Rest is in the warehouse, but it looks like we're fighting war in Liberia. That's how we can find the rice. Liberia. There is no way you have an open market, government. Don't need you see the government put their budget together. That's 780 million dollar budget. Most of that money were going to come from domestic taxes. You can't continue to increase taxes on the people. Today you get Liberians going through Guinea to bring their cars because of the same old thing. Because of the same taxes, they're killing the people, they're killing. And you know when you kill these business people, the librarians already not good at business. When you sample the business, the, 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 the white man, the white man sample, put a, send it, the, the bill to our people. And what people send it to the other people? Some people can't afford rice. Only people now who can afford it. People who can afford it. In this age, Liberia should be fighting for rice. We should be worried about rice in this age. No. That's the last thing. But Mr. President, if you put all the taxes on the people, now you want to budget short for now and short for short for I don't know how you will manage. Because what the president was saying, I know I don't I already know understood what he was saying. My people, that is why we want change. That is why we're looking for a good leader. We're looking for a leader that understands business. We're looking for a leader. We have tried everything. We have tried the real politicians. We have tried the ones that is not politicians. We try footballer. Now we want to try someone who has a financial background, who understands how to negotiate, who knows the problem, who has been going around for so long. Alex Gomez. We understand. Everybody knows very well that Mr. Cummings is sincere and honest to the process. They know that Mr. Cummings' eh, 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 passion, what what motivating or what 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 really brought into politics is because of the Liberian people. Mr. Cummings never came to politics to say I want to run because 
for his so-called rich friend in Liberia or his, 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 his self? No. Mr. Cummings' conviction, what convicted him that he will run for president to see the way people live in Liberia? The way people live in Liberia, in their own country, a small little country that is rich, a country that is rich with everything, mineral, gold, diamond, iron, or rubber, everything. But yet we poor. Only few people enjoying the resources of Liberia. Few politicians. They all got small, small share into businesses. And Liberia is just bent down to the drain like a club. Like a susu club. That's my time to eat. That's my time to eat. I will not speak for nobody. No politician yet. I'm not saying that Mr. Cummings has the golden touch. But if Christmas will be good, you will tell from the eve. Because Mr. Cummings is the only person who telling us. Even when you look in Mr. Cummings' plans, he tell you about agriculture and what we should do. Not just to throw hope or, or, or fertilizer over to our, our uh, 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 farmers. If you don't have a plan, you can't do nothing. There is no way you can tell me that you will have a good agriculture project if you don't have a plan and you don't put it down on paper. There is no way you will tell me, say, oh, when I'm president tomorrow, I will build Liberia without even documenting it to have the plan of you. you there is no way you will create a job in Liberia if you don't have a plan how you're going to create a job. Some people think government creates jobs. No, government don't create jobs. Government create avenues to create jobs. Government got to be friendly. We don't have a friendly government. The government is not friendly at all to business people, to people coming in the country. Everybody putting their interest because they want their cut. They want their cut. But when you say these things, they say, how you know? That's not true. Yes, that's true. We know that. If it's not true, that means our officials will not be that rich. Because how can you be in office for four years and you are millionaire if you don't have a cut? Say so if you don't have a cut. Let's start from Nathaniel Magain. If we compare Magain's salary and his benefits and his whatsoever, there is no way Magain will build such a house. If my girl was working with a company and making the salary he's making now, my girl will not build the house that he's living in today. No way. No way. He will not build all his other small, small lay houses. He will not. He will not build a house to put his mind inside. He will not. If he were working with a corporation and making the same salary right now, he won't be able to do it. He won't be able to do it. All these things. And they brag about it. If Maggie was just working with a corporation and making the salary he making right now, he won't come to America and give the Library Association $5,000 and 2005 for his dues. He will not do it. He will not. If Maggie was making a salary with a company, what he paying him right now? Maggie will not get four five cars in his yard. Let us be honest. So don't you need to get a cut? Eh? How will you feel? That's why we say, listen, enough is enough. To run for president, let's see what you can do. Let's look at your life. This president business, not small job. That's not small job. The president said yesterday, oh, I left my office. I came all the way here. But the president could leave his office and go to other places just to have fun. Yesterday, the president stood up. And people didn't notice it, that the president was defending the businessman about the rice. There's no rice shortage in it. You know, the thing we can say rice shortage, I mean, a Joe, we have problem. 
Oh, yes, that he prime, he's the president. But government don't buy rice. And the president telling us there's a poor, poor, poor rice stay in the country. He said it plain, he said eh, it's in a it's in the interior. <laughs> yeah. President, we have said the poor pro rice is in the interior. Only in Monrovia, the people get problem. But all the other places know. And he disappointed in the journalists because they're giving false news. Instead of speaking the right thing, they're giving false news. False news. Come 2023, see reasons. The problem in Liberia is not the name George Weir, it's the leadership we're looking at. You know, when I said it the other day, and it's a big quote, leadership is not popularity contest. If you think because you're popular, yes, you will win. But if you lack the ability, your glory and everything will disappear within no time. But if you capable enough, if you qualify and you have that mind, that wisdom, that leadership ability, and they elect you within no time, people will get to like you. But Liberians, we are difficult people. Please, this is the time we look at Liberia. This is the time we need to stop this thing here. This man just coming, the other man just coming. We need to stop this thing here for telling me, oh, you're a foreigner. Telling me, oh, you don't get a place in America, in Liberia. Oh, you're sitting in America there, you're doing nothing. You think you will vote, but at the same time, you look at us. We ourselves would look at you too. We are all the same. We're inside together. When the hardship comes, it don't come for George Weir or Mr. Cummings. But because we buy, we've been having bad leaders from long. This is not about George. We are, this is not that we don't like him. It is not a must. It is not a law that George and we are must go two times. My people, we got to educate each other. In every country, first term is by the people. Second term, based on your work. Because the first time, yes, I believe that you will do it. That's why I voted for you. But if you don't do it right, it's on you. Then people turn against you. But nobody hates President Weir. But my people, y'all be honest, please. I know we all love George Weir. Okay, I will take it. I don't love George Weir. Maybe you love George Weir. But see reasons. There will be no war in Liberia. But see reasons. There is no way President Weah can change. There is no way President Weah can turn around to turn it around because nobody will give our government $1 billion. There is no way President Weah can turn it around. You're, because you're going around rejoicing for small, 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 small projects, that's the failure of this government. Worry, you see, if, you, if you're afraid to fail, you will fail. If you're afraid to do things the right way, but because you don't want to do it, you will fail. You will fail. Oh, the president getting invisible pack. Oh, the president building another one. Oh, the pre what mean by the president? What is the role of the president? The president will lead the nation. The president there, he come up with a vision and look for the best. The president there to change the lives of people, not to say physical with his own money. I listen to Trokon Kui on Spoon. My people, don't tell me you will believe such a lie that President Weir put 60% of his own money into the pack. The balance of the money was put in by somebody, either the government or some foreign friends. When I say foreign friends, I'm talking about friend of George Weir. Sorry, Arabia, what's up? But President Weir took 60% of his hard earned money and put into the pack, the invisible pack. If any Liberian believe this thing here, you will suffer for the rest of your life. You will suffer for the rest of your life if you believe what I just say. 
But why you don't believe that in Munel? When President Weah was playing football, when he left football, or even at the time he was in his prime, did President Weah ever pay for one word to be dark in Claritan or, 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 or PHP? No. He never did anything that somebody would say, oh yes, this person have done it before. President Weah took 60% of that total, total budget to face the pack. $2 million they spent on the pack. President Weah alone, 60% of the $2 million was spent from his personal money, according to Truco. Liberians, we need a good leader. We need a good leader. This is not about me. It's not about you. The only person that we see that can do that work right now, that Alex Gomez. The only person that can do that work right now is Alex Gomez. Not nobody from the UP, not Mr. Bwaka, because UP did nothing for you to even depend on UP. We'll go right back into the same crisis. Because the first thing, the women lack leadership too. And if that's the case, then I'd rather take George Weir if I will go to UP. This entitlement syndrome to show that they are not sincere, they lie to you. They lie. Oh, next said this, next said that. And they the one took us to court. They took us to court. Now they join with, with Labor uh, ALP and they took us to court. And everybody, they, all kinds of strategy, all kinds of different, different type of strategy. All kinds of strategy. Today, nobody knows Cummings. Nobody this, but Mr. Cummings, the only man who's still going around the country. Mr. Cummings took upon himself, he going to all the different, different districts in Monserrado, going there, talking to people. But yet, they say, they say Mr. Cummings ain't going nowhere because they want for Mr. Mr. Cummings going on the awareness, talking to people. Y'all wait for the campaign to start. Y'all wait for the campaign. We know when we're going to launch our campaign. Today, Solicitor General did not show up. He's embarrassed because we're waiting for him to go to that court and tell the Liberian people or tell the judge why he removed all that evidence. We got people dying. They're stealing from people. They're killing people. They're raping people. This solicitor general have not prosecuted one citizen, one criminal. But he after or, 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 or an innocent man because of politics playing the dirty games of the government indirectly Mr. Cummings is a political prisoner we need to stand up all kinds of tactics they're coming up with all kinds of different different tactics they're coming up with guys Please. I know people will tell us to say ANC not doing this, ANC not doing that. I don't know who's saying it. We allow the politicians, we all say the politicians, the 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 the, the, the ruling party, along with our other opposition group like Unity Party, who believe that if Mr. Cummings is not in the race, it's a chance for Mr. Bwaka. To say all kinds of things. Nobody know Mr. Cummings. Nobody know this one. Okay, we're the honor dog. We agree. But Liberians, please don't let these people fool you again. There is nothing we can get from out of this government. The president frustrated. The president said, I'm disappointed. Little rice. Little situation made the president piss off. 
Little situation made the president piss off. Yes, so Rice, the president went there to defend. Guys, hold on one minute, please. What you say? Well, my guy, you call the train to come down. Say, you got to come call me here in the train in the living room. What time is it, sir? Where your handbag at? It's somewhere in there. Somewhere where? In the living room there. Hold on, guys. I'll be back quick. Let me give my wife her handbag. Okay, guys, sorry, please. My wife, I had to take her back to her. You know the women, she's supposed to go to work. And she running late now, so she called to try to be and the children right in there. But you know the wife in there. They won't see the husband. So as I say, why you call her son? Call my son or her or my daughter. But anyway. So you see, lack of leadership is the one that got this government into this mess they in today. Lack of leadership. Liberians, please, if you love your country, I heard the president talking about patriots. I listened to that president interview because you know why I listened to it? It was one of his longest engagement with the press and <clears throat> I thought I was going to get something from out of him but all the president did he defended the Lebanese people today yesterday at the same time he was lying don't say it's an insult because lie if the president lie he lied the president said they got pro poor rights in the country if there's poor pro rights in the country then why do we want to be wasting the time with the other rights the president is saying that there's no problem in the counties, only in Monrovia. There's no rice shortage. The people outside there lying, the journalists lying. There's no rice shortage. But we, opposition, we have given this president all kinds of advice. Mr. Cummings, personally, when they had the economic forum, Sam Jackson can attest Mr. Cummings wrote on nine pages proposal to them. But Liberians have Mr. Cummings' name all over the place. Oh, Mr. Cummings refused to be part of it after this man already have his trip, he thinks to do. Mr. Cummings have made himself available to this president and said, let's talk. We, I know we are opposition. But President Weir, I do not 
self-esteem or whatsoever, low self-esteem, cannot talk to commies. Cannot sit and talk to commies. When they had the, 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 the coronavirus the last time, they probably, they, when it bust up again, Mr. Commies wrote the president. The president, in fact, replied through social media. Mr. Commies wrote them and gave them some his proposal. They said when the president come back, he will call Commies for them to talk. They play politics out of it. Because the jealous, the political enemies of Mr. Commies, the wicked ones that Mr. Commies were trying to, 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 to gain some political attraction. Because Mr. Cummings took $150,000 of his family money and put it into his foundation, they get pissed off. People, if you're in Liberia and you listen to me, I know they always say nobody listen to us because we're in America. That's not true. I know people listen to me in Liberia. That's not true. Mr. Cummings is not doing anything because you want to be president this man have a special discipline this man have retired he retired did that mean he's not working again the lay one that he made for himself god bless him he home he got a foundation he got a little organization that is the number one organization liberian organization in liberia that doing good in Liberia. They into health, education, they build schools, they're doing everything to show you that Mr. Cummings is not, not because he wants to be president or else Mr. Cummings are going to take that foundation work and put it on a CDC, on a, on a ANC. No. Mr. Cummings foundation, whatever they're doing is the glory of the foundation. How we understand like politics in Liberia, if there's anything long time, we don't take that whole thing and put it on, on an ANC. No. Mr. Cummings got a school. The only STEM school in Liberia. They got children who go into that school. Strictly scholarship, but you must meet certain benchmark. He got a school in Carwell that he sponsored 100% for our mothers and children and daughters and sisters there who, who who don't have the opportunity to go to school, but they're doing catering, they're braiding hair, and then he gave them money. When they graduate, he gave them loan. Mr. Cummings have the have contributed to the University of Liberia. The 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 the, 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 the what it is uh, 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 um, scholarship fund two million Liberian. Do you know how much is two million Liberian dollar? Two million Liberian dollar. Check it. At the time, how much you rate? How much you rate? Mr. Cummings gave eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the college in in in, in our place there in Maryland. They, they 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 at the UMU, the computer lab at the University of Liberia. But you're saying he didn't do nothing. Mr. Cummings started reaching out to Liberia. The newspaper is there. In the news, newspaper is there. $300,000 worth of medication and medical supplies to the Buchanan Hospital. He took a whole delegation, Coca-Cola delegation from America, getting to Liberia. The Ebola time. Why you think Ellie honor him? Everybody know about it. But this man don't like to talk about it. Library, let us believe. I was say, let us understand. Let us look for good leaders. You don't need to be related to him. People who fall in love with politicians, that mean either that politician and my brother, my sister, or some close relative. Then you say, well, I get no choice. You have a choice. Ask the question. Are you still going to just vote for President Weir without doing what he promised? Are you still going to vote for President Weir and where he left you when he went into that white, to that mansion? You stay to the same point. Are you still going to vote for President Weir on that? 
you want to put him on an impression that, oh, Liberia been hard long time. Can you look at President We Are Life yesterday and today and look at your own yesterday and today and say, it almost... my people, please, please, we're telling you, Liberia can be better than that. Our problem, we are the problem. The only rights that God gave us, the only constitutional right is for you to vote. If Liberia is hard, vote. If Liberia is not hard, don't vote. You know, sometimes we're frustrated. Sometimes we feel so down that we can't believe that only a few Liberians maybe think alike. The other few think different way and they get a handful of people that think the other way. Do you think the people that are messing up our country, they are majority? No, they are not majority. But Liberians, we are people, Liberia, Liberians, we are people who we quick to forgive. That the only country we see rebel them walking all around the place, they get big big jobs and we do nothing to them. It not happening in Sierra Leone. Liberia, the only country today we know that the men are rogue and we still praise the men. Rogue that rogue. Eh? We look at the thing. Kolo, kolo, wawo, un eyes. And they lie to you and you still accept it. Because you love the person. Because you love president. We are president. We are lying on the whole interview. That there's poor pro right stay in Liberia. And still they're selling it in the counties. They point get no problem in the counties. That the journalists causing all the problem. That the journalists causing all the problem. The market people lie. The president went to the port to defend the Lebanese people, the corrupt Lebanese. They are so damn corrupt. These are the things they do. You don't know, forget it. You say about money. Your father, I don't give a damn whether my father is a Lebanese, but I'm a fact is I'm a librarian. If you don't think to be a librarian, you're damn business. But they are damn corrupt. So they manipulate, they take advantage of our system because our system is corrupt. The officials are corrupt. I will give Maggie a pass on this one. Maggie said it, claim, before the president interrupted him, that the people are saying that they cannot sell the rest here for this price, which will increase the price. Do you know why the people say that for? Do you know why? The government just opened a black market. If we get rest like that in our warehouse, they will no rest outside because our rest can go for one month. That rest, two, three months, is done. We don't even know the consumer. We don't know how many how many bags of rice we're supposed to use in a year. They don't even know how many metric tons that we're supposed to uh, uh, use in a year because we don't even know our own population. You ask President, we are now, our population is how many? We'll tell you, say, two million. Because all President, we are know Monrovia is Liberia. All President Weah know Monrovia is Liberia. Let me tell you the real truth. President Weah is comfortable in his position. He's comfortable with everything. And I will say this to you guys. And I stay not convinced that President Weah will run for this election. I stay not convinced. Because things, I can I see the frustration in his face. I see it, but power sweet. Power is sweet. As something sweet. Yeah. So they're playing a the game. Comments are nothing. Comments not doing. Yes, we know that. And my people, comments will not reach out to everybody. We all must make the sacrifice. And me, I will say this. As much as I'm talking to people, I'm not going to force nobody. But I'm still telling you that he's the best. If you see reasons, you understand it for yourself. I don't want you to say, I'm the one who forcing you to do it. I'm the one who pushing you to do it. But some of us, God bless us. We will be in Liberia for campaign. We will be in Liberia before the election start. We will go places. We will talk to our people one way or the other. Because if we don't do that, we're going to fall to the same place. We're going to fall to the same place. Today, you can see no politician going around. Only one man, Alex Cummings. Yesterday, he was somewhere. Today, he's someplace. He that place. They got him in court. They're cursing him. They're doing this. They're doing that. God bless him. What God gave me is for him. But that's his right to run. 
for president. And he telling you what we can do. He telling you, he said, this is how we can do it. And this is not rocket scientists. Any good, any a Liberian who meant well for Liberia, you will understand the man even telling you how to disseminate, to disseminate message, how to send messages out, how to unite the country. He got everything in there. We got to use culture, music, art, different, different things. That is how you connect people together. But we got president for the first time yesterday. He was able to take questions from journalists and he messed it up. And blame the journalists. Look, I know president, we are too good. I know the man too good. Yeah. He blunt, he would never take responsibility as a leader. To stand up yesterday. Go and meet the market women. The people who sat in the rest by a cop. Hear from them. They lying to Mr. President. Then you go to the garden. Who got a store? Who selling rice? The Lebanese people selling rice. In their store. The retailer. They selling rice. They don't want to get a rice store. When the people go to the Lebanese men's store, they mail them send it for no fourteen dollars. He tell you say you want to find you want to let it stay. What you do? But what Jefferson? What what Josephine did? She sees some other librarian pool license instead of going to Lebanese men's store. She sees the the librarian pool not license. Oh God, we got work to do, my people. We got work to do. We got work to do. If we don't do it ourselves, if we sit down and vote on love, then so. If we vote on love, then so be it. This is not about we criticizing George. We are alone. We just said it the rice. If this government serious want to help, this government can put every damn thing aside. This government can tell you exactly how much the rice costs on the international market. You can tell me, it, we, you know, they acting like some organization, like the library organization want to go buy rice from some local person. Because rice right now in America yeah, is about $18, $15, $16, depends on what, which type of rice you want. But I'm telling you, on the market, they get rice for $6, they get rice for $7, they get rice for $10, different, different prices. People who buying it directly from the from the fact from the farm, but the president went over there to, to go defend Lebanese people. Defend Lebanese people, you don't know about the Lebanese people. President, we are know the Lebanese people already. You know they are damn corrupt people. Damn corrupt. Everybody there for themselves. You know, <laughs> but my people. That is why some of us behind commies. Commies administration, there will be no hidden secret. Because the fact is that that's not something you must lie to the people. We got to fear ourselves. If you think it's too much, get investors, get people involved. Get people involved. If you take the rice and give it to one man, that is where the problem come here. That is where the problem come from. The president said that open market, anybody can sell rice. They're not truth. They're not everybody can sell rice. Because or else some people will carry rice to Liberia, they will stop them. You think the boy know how to go buy the rice from? But people, I will see your man. This election are coming. It will not be an easy election. It will not. Liberians, we got a lot of work to do ourselves. Thomas Do. Nobody can stop corruption easily. You can minimize corruption. But one of the problems we got in Liberia when it comes to corruption. The government thinks that they will catch you and then they prosecute you. No. 
what government needs to do, government needs to put things in place to stop corruption. Government needs to invest in technology. We're in a terror war. We, this, we, I'm sorry, we're in the, we're in the 21st, we're in the 21st century. We know Liberia is a terror war country, but Liberia is so small that you can digitalize the entire damn thing. We got fiber optic. That is why Mr. Comey is talking about infrastructure. The three major components within infrastructure that can keep every system working is electricity, good drinking water, internet connectivity, and security. Security is part of infrastructure. Most people don't know. You get these things in place. You can computerize the entire Ministry of Finance and Commerce and whatsoever. When will Liberia government call you or write you and say, your license is about to expire? When? You will never know. You yourself got to find it up. Because no data. No data. When United Nations went to Liberia, when the self were doing all the rice, do you know what self were marking the houses? To know how many people they will be feeding. To know how many people they will be feeding. That is why they went and marked all these houses and went there to know how many did the census to say, okay, we got X amount of people to feed. The Liberian government have not done it yet. So, not just to stop corruption. You can't stop. Nobody can stop. Even in the great United States, you can't stop corruption, but you minimize corruption. So don't ask the question about stopping corruption. In America, you can't stop it. They can, look, they got people who are brave. They put things in place and they say, when we grab you, you'll go to jail for 20 years. So other people can still test the system. In South Africa, if they catch you through that airport with a diamond at 20 years prison, but they got people who can smuggle diamonds. So you can stop corruption. You can minimize corruption. And by you minimizing corruption, it's not like you put a law and say, if I catch anybody stealing, I will jail you. No, 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 no. You got to put things in place first. It almost like you're in your house. You look at the door. The door is not secure. The door open, can lock. You must be able to lock the door. You must get good windows so nobody can come in. But you can't be, you can't leave the place vulnerable. In Liberia, we stay using paper and, 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 and checking and, and taking receipt numbers down. So you can you can stop it. You can minimize it. And I know communists can minimize corruption because definitely communists will put things. That's why he, he said technology will be play. We will get it through. Okay. Mongo J said he can try 2029. Maybe by 2029 yourself, the only good thing is that you're living in America, so your life will be good. It will be good for you. But 2029, Mr. Cummings will not run. 2029, so don't worry. If Mr. Cummings don't win election in Liberia, he don't need to run 2029 because I might not be around myself or maybe I might not support him at that time too, but we're not looking at 2029. Maybe, you see, when you get plan B in life, then you already make up your mind for plan B. Do you want me to take my, my lap out, my, my team from you? Okay. If you get plan B, we're all even trying plan A. That's what it meant in a sedition. CDC waited for Ellen Johnson for two terms, so we should do the same thing. There's no plan B in Mr. Cummings in our political career. What we're doing right now is plan A. If plan A don't work, fine. Then we'll sit down later on. So keep your 29, be worried about 29 before you lose 2023. How are you? Thomas Doe, we don't care. We don't care how you feel about the president. He's doing his job, okay? Thomas though, you heard me insulting? You're a damn fool just for that. You're stupid. Since you want me to say it to you. Just by using the word insult, you don't want just insult. So I try to tell you, you're stupid. So stupid is not a cause. But you're acting stupid for you to come on my platform and say I'm insulting. You see, it's on the dummy thing because he wear nectar. I know that, that he picture said, or that Joey picture. Because he wear nectar, he thinks he's smart. 
Thank you, Mr. Noah Dom. Thank you, Maya Mo, teaching small sense. They wear cool suit and take picture and put on profile. Now, how stupid most of them are. That the same thing we're talking about librarian people. We got a lot of librarians who, who don't even can think like a human being. They go to school, they got the degree, but they say dumb, dull, dull people. But now let's see now. Let me let me just show Thomas Doe. Thomas K. Doe. Thomas K. Doe is a crew, is that's a crew name, or maybe that's a crime name, or maybe that's a damn global name. But to show now, you see a crazy man running. Thomas, to all my viewers, please give me this. Give me two minutes of your time. Let me just tell some of those in. Uh, 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 you see this crazy man running. By the time the man pass butt naked, you follow him. So you're the man who crazy. I ain't got nothing to say, but you're taking your ASS on my show, on my post, on my life, and you listen to me and all the nonsense I'm talking. So that means you and myself, you're more stupid than me. So with your necktie, you take a good photo and you put it on your profile, but you're a dumb, dull guy. You will watch the show. He ain't got nowhere to go. You won't get nowhere to go. Thomas Doe will say, but they are listening to me. Look at him. Another fool. Just how your name come up and I will highlight your name and I will give you another, I will give you a piece of the wall too. Because I don't want to run the show. No, when I stay on inside, they say, the guy they say, they say, the child who say that man will not sleep, they say will not sleep, that how dumb and stupid you are. So if you say that, do us, do, do, most of the librarians that you're looking at today, that you and I were in America, you see you're begging for anything? No. But because we love our country. But if you're a crew guy, then you're one of the dumbest crew men I ever seen in my life. Yeah. Let's go. Let me, let me, let me point on a stupid uh, uh, review. Let me see. Just continue your show, book, Jimmy. Since you know all that book, you stay there. <laughs> uh, now we, we, we know the kind of person we're dealing with now. Eh? Thomas K. Do. When you ask him what they came for, he said they came for Peter, a crewman. My friend brought okra from Monrovia and sent it to Lofa County. <laughs> you know, you know what I like about your who not supporting Mr. Cummings? You ain't got nothing to say. Nothing. Nothing you got to say. You can't, you can't even defend or promote your candidate. But everything you're saying is like, you go say, that, oh, we'll do this. We'll do that. That's why like brought Ben trying for so long and we stay in the same thing. Poor guys. Yeah. Uh, listen, Thomas ain't got nowhere to go. He will listen to my lies. Only fools don't think. Wise men change, but only fools remain the same, like Thomas do. Do I look like somebody for you to care for my feelings, you boy? Don't care my feelings, somebody do. Let me look at your picture, Google self. Because you can tell if I start wearing cool suit, let me look at your picture, good. Thomas do maybe that fake name. <laughs> Thomas do don't have a profile. Thomas do live in Liberia. Thomas do a label. 
or men who don't have a pro oh that josh we are that joe we are picture he get on his something there so you man you man i want to uh uh uh, uh joe we are official or are they wonder who got fake pictures that one of the his tell me but i never see men who got the entire profile is all about George Weir. What? The man who profile, hold on. I, I think that George Weir picked a George Weir page there. He said that he can use that Thomas Doe. Damn it. Everything at George Weir. Everything about George Weir. When people, I think that George Weir, yeah. It's that George Weir, I finish cussing the shit out of you. Let me tell you real truth. That social media did. That George Weir. Or that George Weir. I don't know George Weir, boy. Book Jimmy. One wants you and your comments advice. Amen. Jimmy Do. Please stop lying to the people. Cummings does not have anything in Liberia yet. Okay. Listen, Thomas, though, the first place now we know that you yourself don't even know. You are, that's a fake page. You don't live in Liberia, Thomas, though. <laughs> you love a lies. We, well, you, anyway, you say we, you talk about a sedition. You talk about sedition, anyway. Some of those that are talking nonsense, but he enjoying it. You are a big liar. President, we are who went to the people place today. President, we are went to yesterday and lie. He said, pro, pro, right? Stay in the country. <laughs> Guys, I'm done already. I'm just going through the comments here. Eh? So I can't wait for President. We are to stay in front comments. President, we are never stood for coming before anyway. Comments will watch that one there. Shit. What? For the first time, President, we are took question from, from his own journalist. From the journalist that he was just, he couldn't answer nothing. This president was just giving us lies and lies and lies. Wow. The president telling us about pro pro rice in in the counties yeah. hey, Louis. yep we got to do a lot of work in liberia because our corrupt politicians they have brainwashed most of our guys like thomas like thomas do who see nothing wrong or thomas do know that george we are supposed to go two times no matter what that's a law so Thomas doing give a damn, ain't no. But we got a lot of work to do. We we'll fix it, guys. I'm not worried. You all, when you listen to Josh, we have interview today. You will, you will understand it. Yesterday you will know. You listen to it. Listen to him. My man, how we pin us, man? You see, look at look at my body. Look at my body. You see, I look at somebody who worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want Eli Brokechi? Hell. Unless you want to tell me that false Thomas K. Do. Maybe that George, we are there, self. You might not judge, we are using Thomas K. Do because I just look at the profile. Everything on the profile is about George, we are. Everything. The entire profile is George, we are. George, man, we are. Yeah. George, we are. George, we are. George, we are. Everything here is about George, we are. Thomas Do, Thomas K. Do. Strong Joe, we are supporter. Strong Joe, we are supporter. Strong Joe, we are supporter. That one, just love Joe, we are for passion. The city Joe, we are too careful. He said, my man, sometimes tell you, you got to tell me I'm wrong, my man. 
who told you that? Well, you must be speaking in tongues. Who stopped from doing your own? Ah, man, nobody stopped that man. But Thomas Dona can talk. Thomas Dona is a slave to himself. Thomas Dona, you guys will never win, okay? Okay, Thomas Dona, your mouth that prayer book. Your mouth that prayer book, Thomas Do. Thomas Do now say you might work in the government. Thank you, my dear. Mm. Thomas Do now. So so Zogos. Emmanuel Jackson comments will be the next president of Prayer You got it right, brother. You got it right. Okay, oh book Jimmy. <laughs> I just say book Jimmy like Joel the book Jimmy and you. Keep dreaming that comics will win election in Labro. You must say who dreaming? I'm saying it. You see me sleeping? You see my ass sleeping? JB supporter. <laughs> no, not J I want a JB supporter. You can tell JMB supporter. <laughs> I am not dreaming. I'm open. I'm saying with my eyes open. You know what level sedition or other people, or most of you guys? You know they got a print a part, but they say when a long teeth man die, you think he's laughing. Y'all will never accept it. Just how president we are, we never accept responsibility as a president to get it to straighten it up or to get it right. That is how y'all will never accept it. Every election that come or the disgrace you. Every election. Labrampo like will be here again. Labrampo like will disgrace you. This will put say in your gary. They will put say in your gary. Say. He will put sin in your gallery. Y'all watch it. Samuel, Samuel Williams. I'm not here to convince you. I know who you're supporting, my brother. If you will change, you will change on your own. If you will change, you will change on your own. Samuel, I'm not here to convince you. And I'm not here to even satisfy you. Because the fact of the matter is that I know exactly who you're supporting. Your ideas and my ideas are not the same. You are far on the other side with the, the either the Joe Buaka or the Weir. So I'm not here to convince you. Election is 50 plus one. 50 plus one. I'm telling you about my candidate. You think I'm here to come beg you? And you, for you to vote or do your own thing is on you, not me. The people are sort of convinced. The people know themselves. The independent people. They're some of the seditions. The smart ones, not the one who asks questions about Coca-Cola, not the one who talking about the war to say, oh, uh, I was in refugee camp, not the one who looking at lies and say, to say white, then you say blue, like you, Samuel, Samuel well, I'm not going to convince you, my brother. There is no way you will change on your own. You will change on your own. You are Liberian. So I know exactly who you supporting. I'm not a stranger to you now, Samuel. I am not a stranger to what the hell in the world you say. Uh, uh, we want, you can't convince us. The first thing, you can't compare your candidate with my candidate. You can't you can get nothing to show about your candidate. I'm the one talking about my candidate. So what you want to say? There's nothing you can show, Samuel. Nothing. Samuel, you got family in Labra. I got family in Labra. I'm voting in Liberia. I don't know whether you're voting. I'm a voter. So for you, I don't know if you vote. For me, I will be in Liberia. I will vote. You, you wouldn't rely on your family. And you know your family, and you know what the family they can do. They tell you, say, I will vote for whoever I want to vote for. Maybe if you're there, then you can talk. But the fact is that you're not even a voter. You're living right here like myself. Let me show you something. To show I'm a voter, you see my librarian license? This is my librarian license. You see, they see the seal of Liberia. Okay, so your own, you don't get it. So you now a voter. So if we talking, I talking to people who sort of vote. You see, let let let, let Thomas do Thomas do in Liberia, he will vote. Maybe he register to vote because a lot of librarians in our country didn't register. Lot of librarians, lot of librarians that didn't register.
<laughs> Maybe that Kev has not using the page that you write. <laughs> okay, oh. Well, that is how we will cuss the shit out. Okay. All right. And. This is another fool who lives in Accra. This will be the last time you will watch this show, Mr. Fool or Madam Fool or whosoever. Have a nice night, eh? No, Thomas Doe, because you honor my post, I got to call your name. I don't like your name. How would I like your name? Why would I want to like your name? Your name is your name. I didn't name your mom or pa gave you. Now I should like your name. You honor my post. I'm not the one who put it there. You just said type your own name with P and D on it too. You don't want running all over my post. Thank you for insulting. Okay, no, no. I give it to you right. I give it to you right. Listen to me. I'm not one of the ones that who I will be. How in the world I will be a defense minister? Where? Why should I be a defense minister? For what? Is that how you do things? That's not how we do it, my brother. You don't rule that way to be defense minister. Don't worry, I will show you a post, but you out. You will never follow me again. I block you already for acting stupid and acting like a fool on this page. And, and you requested for friendship and all. Jaban Macaulay, he lived in Ghana. He requested for friendship, but he come in there. He say, he said, what he say? Yeah. He got something here. He said, the heart will cost the shit out of comments and whatsoever. Thomas, do your eyes is not open. Your eyes is closed because you don't know nothing about Liberia. Just sit in America and continue your show. Thomas Doe, let me tell you, let me make you understand now. I don't know nothing about Liberia, but I think I got a lot of things in Liberia compared to you. I think I got a lot of businesses, a lot of investment in Liberia compared to you. I got more grounds in Liberia compared to you. See, I'm one of the librarians who came to America in 1946 and stay in America and never go to Liberia. The only time I've not been to Liberia is for the last two years. You understand? Okay, Thomas do. Maybe this joy we are government, you enjoying it big time. That's why you got in mind to even talk. Yeah. Thomas do you threaten me? I won't see you in Liberia on that day, okay? You threaten me or you trying to just be friendly to say you want to see me in Liberia? If you threaten me, get ready now. Because I can make people go after that name too. I can make people go after that name. Samuel Wilson, I don't know why you're wasting your time. I'm not a stranger to you. I know you very well. I'm not here to convince you. And the fact of the matter is that you can, if you get people you support in Liberia, you can tell them who to vote for. They can decide and they might not follow you because I saw it 2017. All my, 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 my nephews and other people voted for CDC. CDC was the most popular, George was the most popular man. And they voted for him. So it make no difference. So when you tell me you will support your, your people in, you can tell your people to, to vote. Like, I beg you, the people know right now who to vote for. The ones that are supposed to vote for CDC, like Thomas Doe. Thomas Doe, 
know exactly who to vote for. Thomas Doe knows exactly who to listen. The fact of the matter is that when you say insult, stupid is not insult. If somebody is stupid, they are stupid. That means you get sense. You're saying something different. So, Mongoje, if you yourself want to think that you're stupid, that's why you say I'm insulting and stupid sound like insult to you. That's the problem. You come on my page. Listen, you if you don't want to listen to me, you go. You, you're you supposed to watch me. I know who Mongoje is. I know who I'm talking to. Certain people, you don't need to waste your time on them to say you're convinced them. They're one of they can convince themselves when their minds are made up, it's made up. So I'm not here to can satisfy you. And it will not even turn the other people away. It's not going to turn nobody away. They put a sort of the people who fall in comments. The only thing I'm just giving them a little story and a little prep up or telling them the good and the bad about Liberia, what we need to do. So they know for themselves. I'm not forcing nobody. I'm not convincing nobody to say, you must vote for Mr. Cummings. But I'm telling you, and I want you to say, yes, I'm not begging you, but I'm asking you. Maybe it's not, you see, I just confused you right there. Because your minds are not made up. Your, uh, uh, you already got a fixed mind. So that's it. You asking me why I blocked the person from Ghana and I your page. You think my mom on spend? You think my own vacation? My mom on vacation? Now, real why you black the person from Ghana? You list. You saw his post. You saw the man post, and he just put up there. You you read it? I thought I put it here for you guys to see. Some of y'all got the opportunity to even talk. You know what I like about y'all? So y'all go on, on the C you go on CDC show, forget it, man. They will cost the hell out of you. But at least you're having a free riot. I'm only telling you when you're stupid, you're stupid. It means that I cost. Y'all can go on Prophet show. What? What are you talking? He will not come back. He broke. He cannot buy. Listen, this show not for dumb people, man. Yo, you got too dull. Yo, okay, you're, sp you're speaking in tongues here? Yeah. I'm just going through the comment now. I'm done already. Thomas Doe. Are you the one typing, man? Thomas Doe, I, I, I enjoy you. Maybe that's your first time on my page, but that's what I do when I finish. I try to put the post up. You see? That's why you see Thomas, you see the amount of people that are telling me, oh, Muni, don't pay attention to so person. Don't do this, don't do that. Because they know I don't do it. But sometimes you guys can get us out of our shelf. But I just show you guys that we can do more than that if we want to. So it's not anything bad. You guys need to go to Liberia because it's getting lit. For you, for your guy, <laughs> but Samuel Willen, how you say we should go to Libra? You say you let you read that in America, do <laughs> uh, thank you. Don't worry about ANC, the man who running for president is living in Liberia. Okay, guys, today Thomas Doe is my number one comment. That guy, thank you for enjoying me. Okay, Thomas Doe is the number one guy. Who put in a lot of comments and who's a supporter of George Weir? Yes, I told you I used some other words on you. I'm sorry, but notwithstanding, I said it because from the, you know, let me tell you, sometimes people try to get you out of your shelf and, you know, out of your skin and try to bring the other side. But I can tell anybody I am not a hundred percent guy. I'm, I was out there too myself. You know, one librarian like, say grown up. I must say I grown up man too, so I can I know how to dance in a mud and to get by. So, guys, let me tell you, the only man with a plan for Liberia. But this is the question we need to ask: What will you do for Liberia? What are your plans when it comes to infrastructure? What are your plans when it comes to agriculture, create job creation, healthcare, education? And, you know, 
How are you going to move Liberia forward with a division in Liberia, with all the different, different things in Liberia? How will you do that? But Mr. Cummings is saying that this is my plan. Anywhere, no decision is right until it's right. I don't, I, I owe no one, I, 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 I don't blame anyone. You, you owe no one an apology for voting for George Weah. At the time, everybody saw themselves in George Weah. George Weah had every opportunity to be like Paul Kigami. Because Paul Kigami is so loved by his people until he can suppress the opposition. That's the same thing we thought was going to happen in Liberia. That is why some opposition was so afraid they started going to CDC. But when they noticed that George Weah lacked the leadership, everybody back off. They said, oh, but then we got free. To see opposition talking by this time. But whether George Weah was going to do it or not, and we agreed for Mr. Cummings to run, Mr. Cummings' plans was to go back and reintroduce himself. So, don't let nobody fool you that nobody know Cummings. That BS. Hard in a wall, you will say that you don't know Cummings. But we still got new people coming in like Bureau to run. We just got another new candidate they call, I don't know what he needs to uh, One. One other guy just came up. Then we got the, the castle who just been arrested. Every one of them said, Mr. Uh, Cummings, that how bad because they, oh, my, I never see, yeah. You know, it just playing on me now. Now I know Liberians do not like good people. Imagine people in Liberia saying that Kiasse can defeat Mr. Cummings, Kiasse better than Cummings, Kiasse this, just because Kiasse was spending the money one million, two million, five million. He was spending it. And what happened today? What happened with Kassel? Kassel landed in federal prison. Oh, nobody know Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings, nobody know the man. Mr. Cummings was in District 5 today. Nobody know Mr. Cummings. He was all over the place he go. But every day they name Alexander Cummings in the newspaper. Oh, the man finger document. Oh, Mr. Cummings not correct. Oh, Mr. Cummings not there. News that news, every bad news, good news that all news. Your thanks for promoting Mr. Cummings. Nobody know him. Nobody know Mr. Cummings. Nobody know Mr. Cummings. This and that. Mr. Cummings, that, that lie. Mr. Cummings, too, Abu. Mr. Cummings, greedy. He won't be president. Mr. Cummings, he fingered the document. What document he fingered? <laughs> Because CDC know that George Weah and George Weah said no that he can't go against Mr. Cummings. George Weah will not go for debate. He will not debate the issue. All George Weah fighting to do is to finish all the small, small project on time and go around and be talking. They will put debate on George Weah will not show a George Weah show for one debate. I will resign. I will resign for everything I'm doing. A job we are facing Mr. Cummings up and say let them debate one on one on national issue. I will resign. I will resign from Facebook. Job I will never. Today, the first time, yesterday, the first time for George, we had to take question from journalists. And the president blamed the journalists. Blame the marketeers. He blamed librarian people. He defended the business people. And you say, you don't see the rest. You see all the rest. There is no rest such as. They're not government buying rest. They be the other problems that the government need to fix so the rest business can just settle. But when we say that one, you say we hate Joe. We are Thomas Do. We gave him ideas. Government, you need to sit down with these people. Government knows exactly how much the price of rice. But the taxes, the whatsoever, the post, they can't sell it. My girl, we're trying to say it. My girl said, these guys said they want to increase the price before the president came in and started talking. He said, let me be honest with you guys. They're even telling us that they want to increase the price. That is the main thing. Well, all the thing, my girl, we're trying to say the truth. Come up and tell like, bring put the truth. Say, listen, the rice now is expensive. These people trying to do this, this, this. Okay, y'all will buy the rest at least for $14. And for now, you got to buy it. The people already buying the rest for $18. The poor already buying the rest for $16. Tell the librarian man, the librarian man will find the money to buy the rice. It's better to see the rice than not to see the rice. We will buy the rice. 
Liberians will buy that rice for $16 if they see it. They will buy it. It will be tough, but they will buy it. Tell the people the truth instead of you going there to defend the businessman. Then Thomas now, Thomas do asking me if I not said rice before. You think a rocket scientist? No. It's not rocket scientist. That is what Mr. Cummings will be president. The only man in Liberia, the only politician who running for office, who understand the economy, who knows how to negotiate, who have done it before and have done it for the biggest company, one of the biggest company in the world and did it with country to country and company that comes. The man talk about, he said, in my third year, my first time, our budget will reach $1 billion. Everybody start cursing him. Oh, Mr. Cummings, yeah. That is, what happened today? The government rushed it to $780 million and they don't have money. That is why we're getting it. That is why we stuck because bulk of that money is supposed to come from taxes. And in our same budget, President Weah got $150 million to play with on his own. Eh? So, so corruption, 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 corruption. Why? Why are you suffering the people? You're suffering the masses. You're suffering the people. CDC government, no more option. You ain't got nothing in place. Nothing you got to start. How to, how to handle it now? No way. All you got stuck. Librarians will vote against you. Do, Thomas do. The only thing I pray that if Joshua lose the election, he should not do anything funny. Do not do anything funny, Mr. President. Do not let Maguire or Twe or Jefferson to fool you. You want to go and live freely? You want to be in Liberia? You want to hang out with the big boss? You want to chill? You want to enjoy yourself? Do not try to do anything. You will act like Bobby. You will act like other president that gone to jail. Don't do it because... Liberians will get in the street. Don't do it. Nobody suppress you. We had a free or smooth transition. The second transition in the history of Liberia from since 1944 to this time. And we must do the same thing again. It is not a must. Your second term victory depends on you. If the people want to vote for you, fine. But if you think that this election you will steal it with 50, 50 plus 1% or 50 plus 5%, Mr. Weir, we know that you're unpopular. It's impossible for you to win it. We know very well that you're unpopular. There is no way you can win election in Liberia. The Liberian people will not vote for you. With all the hardship, people dying, killing people, the government had never in four years going to five years have never prosecuted one killer. They never found one killer in the country. They never found one rapist to even send them to jail. Can't even protect the people. The president is saying that when you're in Lekki, no rest, go make farm. Let all go make farm now. Because you're president. Some people say, Liberian like, people lazy. They won't do nothing. But George, you are president. Jefferson Koji, mayor. He's a millionaire today. But the other librarians are lazy. They want to do nothing. They graduate the city. Instead of them going on a farm to go make farm, they want to do one city in the city. But Joe, we are saying the city. Jefferson Koji is saying the same city. They are all in the city. But because everything in the favor now, so the people go in the play, go make farm. You're going to make farm. You can even feed yourself. They asked the president of agriculture. He gave me answer. The president lied to the people. Thomas Do, just stick around and listen to Ellis Cummings. The five plans of Ellis Cummings. Listen to it, Thomas. Don't leave. Listen to it. And also, Samuel, 
you can listen to it. You can make your own decision. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Cecilia Colley. She said criminal commies. You see, that's a woman. Okay, uh, this one, let me, I'm playing it for you. Okay, let me answer. Uh, Emmanuel, we will sign the contract with Musa Ability when they appropriate the tank camps. You know what I'm saying? We're not afraid to do it. And you guys will not cause that confusion. Musa Ability, Liberty Party, and ANC, Commons ANC, we are partners. We are all partners. So don't worry about who will be VP, who will not be VP. You getting it? Liberty Party is a political party on their own. ANC is a political party, but we are all in collaboration. So when the time reach, you will know, my brother. Don't worry. Don't worry. Musa ability is 10 times better than any of your other candidates that you got. So if you behind Joel, if you behind what it means himself, uh, 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 Joseph Boaka, Joseph Boaka thinking about carrying Ben Yuri. So that what you need to worry about. And Yombly, so what's going to happen? So that Ben Yuri, they carry. So, so Ben Yuri and uh, 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 ability, who you prefer? Uh, I prefer Ben I, I prefer ability than Ben Yuri. Ben Yuri got too much things in when he played. Too much. But ability, he's a good guy. He's an honest guy. He's a businessman. There's nothing there to show that ever indicted him before. So all that thing you're talking, this and that, are all politics. So don't worry. When the appropriate time come, they will sign a year. So don't worry. And when you're talking about the pressure, no, it's not on me. Don't worry. There will be no pressure. I'm cool. I'm fit like hell. If I will get pressure, I will get pressure. But I just want to show you something about Cecilia here. And action is better than wars. All those debates, they've been doing that better. They do. What? Yeah. You see, they also say, I'm not say stupidness. I'm not say stupidity. I'm not say this young lady or older lady or, or, or whatever that woman or man. You say action speak. Act, action is better than wars. So now, that won't make it worse, man. George, we are action. It's not even better. His action alone is not even better. People are dying. They're killing people. So if you say action is better than wars, that means everything that happened in Liberia is done by George. We are. Hey, man, don't do that thing, man. Action is better than wars. Action speaks louder than wars. So everything that happened in Liberia is done by George Weir. The killing, the whatsoever. What are you trying to tell us? So debate, they're not nothing. What are you debating for? George Weir just put the uh, 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 invisible pack. George Weir just connected the other road, the George that he met. There. So what we hire George Weir for? Sissy, man. 18 year old, your, now, after she finished now, then she caused comments. Criminal comments. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> debate with Fisi made a comments. Don't man, I beg you, man. You know, uh, uh, Monko J, I know Monko J that man or that Monko J that woman, because both men and woman can use that name. They get Monko J and they get Monko J. Oh, yes. So it's a both. Male, male or male, male, male or female can use that name. But you say Fisi male like commies will debate George Weir. Ma, George Weir can't even answer question with a journalist that, that commies he will debate. Eh? That commies? <laughs> uh, I say, sedition, I just sorry for you. I just sorry for your sedition. Yes, let me send the link. I mean, I'm coming to bring somebody out here. Let me take a relax. I'm going to bring a friend up here to teach your little sense. And Mongo J, please don't leave yet. And somebody will come and educate you a little bit from me. So let me just take a break. Yeah.
Okay, Anthony, I just sent you that link. I just sent you the link. So you see, these are some of the things, but since you guys are here, I wanted to just see what Com is talking about. Eh? So Mongo J and Samuel Williams and Thomas Do. There are five priorities we have, and we call that the what. And then there are five things we call the how we'll do it. And those priorities are as follows. Our first priority is infrastructure. Simply put, is electricity, it's roads, it's water, and it's internet and cell phone connectivity across Liberia. We have to, have to invest in infrastructure. That is the top priority. That's the basis on which we can and will do everything else. The second priority for us is job creation. There are too many unemployed, underemployed, and unemployable Liberians. The unemployment rate is over 85%. And therefore, job creation is our next priority, creating jobs for the Liberian people. Our next priority is agriculture. We are a country that do not fear ourselves. These are things we can do for ourselves. We should be producing rice to feed ourselves. And my commitment is that by the end of my first term in office, we will be self-sufficient in rice production. And within education, we are focused on vocational training, teachers training, and adult education. But we have to educate our young people because again, that's how we can help them create jobs. That's how we can train farmers. And so these things are all linked together. And our final priority in terms of the what's is health. Because you can have good infrastructure, you can have a good job, you can feed yourself, you can have great education, but if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. And so health is our fifth priority. And there we're focused on primary health care and preventive health care. So those are the what's we'll do for our people, for the librarian people. How are we going to do these things? The first how is we want to engage Liberians differently in the transformation of our country. We call this hearts and minds. How do we get all Liberians to participate in the changes that are required? We're going to use arts and music and culture and reconciliation and religion. All of these things, we will be deliberate in using these things to engage us as a people in this transformation process. And so we're doing some work on how we can make those things happen. The next how is that we're gonna find the money. We have to find the resources, the money, to do all of the what I mentioned earlier. And the way we'll find the money is, first, we'll go after waste in government. You know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't need or we pay too much for things that we do need. So for example, I believe the vehicles we buy for our government officials we spend too much money on that. We should reduce the number of vehicles and we should buy less expensive vehicles for our government officials. We need to reduce how much they make so we can pay teachers and civil servants and police officers and the military officers and healthcare workers, people who actually do the work. We need to pay them more money and reduce the gap between those at the top and those who actually do the work. The other way we'll find the money is going after this thing called corruption. You know, corruption has been the bane of our country. It's, it's the, the primary reason why we are as underdeveloped as we are today. And we will aggressively go after corruption. The first thing we'll do is we will appoint a corruption czar, a minister in charge of corruption in the presidency that will coordinate all of the agencies that are meant to of uh, fine corrupt officials. Secondly, thing we'll do is we'll make sure we are giving the resources, the money, the right people, the right logistics to the anti-corruption agencies, the LACC, Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the General Accounting uh, Office, the Public Procurement and Concessions uh, Commission. We will make sure they got the right resources to go after corrupt uh, officials. After that, when we find people who are corrupt, we will prosecute them. 
we will put them in jail and we'll seize the assets. It will not be good enough for you just to resign. Okay. So those are the things we will do to really go after uh, corruption. I have committed that I will not take a salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it towards helping to fight uh, corruption. That's how important I think it is to, to us. And then the other way we'll find the money is we'll make sure we're getting full value, the full money we, monies we're due from our natural resources. We'll look to exploit other natural resources so we can get the funds required to fund health care, to fund infrastructure, to create jobs, etc., etc. So finding the money is the second how. The next how is we want to create a government of inclusion. We want all sections of our country to be represented in the government. We want opposition political parties to be in government. Because I believe, we believe that having a government inclusion will help all of us make the right decisions. It will make sure that we're spreading the resources of our country across the entire country. And then the last two hows, one is growing the private sector. We will focus on growing the private sector so librarians can primarily benefit from that growth. No longer should Liberian business people be spectators to our economy. And we want to actively support Liberianization and encourage and provide credit and other facilities to Liberian businesses so they can participate. And last but not least, we will use technology. We'll leverage technology to help us achieve our goals. So those are the what's in the house. I thank you. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Liberia. Okay, thanks, God, and uh, thanks for watching again. That is the five what and five how. And Anthony, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Okay, before Anthony come in, let me just uh, say something to Mogoje. And so he he so he will fight corruption last. Maybe Mogoje, you stay don't understand if you are paying attention to the five watts. They got something called infrastructure, and Mr. Cummings listed the first three priorities for any government, which is electricity, good drinking water, internet connectivities, and whatsoever. Because if you don't have light in the country, what will you want to waste your time on good health, on, on agriculture, and on education? Because you need internet in the schools. You need electricity in the school. Everything is electricity before you can go that far. So sometimes you don't know. And let me just talk to this other individual here. That uh, and saying that, uh, 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 why Mr. Com is not doing what he's saying, my brother yeah, Emmanuel. Mr. Uh, Emmanuel <laughs> you expect Mr. Cummings to do these things? What George we are did before we, we he was elected? What Ellen did before she was elected? What Charles Taylor did? Charles Taylor killed people and we elected him. Ellen Johnson came with the war, we gave it to her. George we are play football. We give it to we give it to, what Joseph Boaka did after twelve years and all his entire life was political appointment. What he did after he left minister and uh, after he left from dual government, what he was doing before early even asking to run as VP. Liberians, we got a lot to do. Be smart. Ask questions about the enter the twenty first first century. Don't be talking about something way back. The man. Doing what he's supposed it's up to him to do what he needs to do. But the law and the, the constitution are back on Liberian to run for president. Is you must be a Liberian citizen, 35 years old, and that's it. So every Liberian has the right to run. If you want to be a humanitarian, you want to give back to your community. But when it comes to giving back, nobody can challenge Mr. Cummings giving back to Liberia. So, and Anthony, you just saw Mr. Cummings five watts and how. Tell me, I want you to start from infrastructure. What you saw in there, that infrastructure that men talk about, infrastructure come with a lot of things. Even a lot of people don't know that even security is in infrastructure, bridges and roads, everything is infrastructure. So tell me, how you see that? Just give me your, give me your thoughts, Bob. Well, thank you so much, uh, General, for having me on the show. Um, I think it's an opportunity for Liberian to sit back, watch, evaluate these candidates and make an informed decision. Just throwing out blanket statement that what Imaya Bella just did so why he's not doing it now? Simple. Only one president at a time. Only one government at a time. You don't run two government concurrently. That's your answer. Right? You have one government. And for Liberia, we have something called a unitary state. What does that mean? It means that 
almost everyone that work in government in Liberia is appointed by the president. Almost everyone. So that means 98% of the people in government are appointed by pre the president of the Republic of Liberia. The other 2% per person has to do with our lawmaker and also civil servants, right? And that's it. So 98% of the people that work, in, that work in government in Liberia are appointed by, the, by our president, which is not a good thing for our democracy. We need to decentralize that. We need to elect our own mayor. We need to elect our own city uh, um, superintendent. But what does that mean, infrastructure? Well, of recent, we saw the, the, the soccer at our RA. Electricity. Electricity is the key to a developing world in this 21st century. You cannot and will not do anything. You and I right now, we will not have this show if there is no electricity. We cannot have this conversation that we're having right now. So electricity is number one, right? For the functioning society, even for you to do anything in the world, um, in a hospital, in schools, in everywhere, electricity, electricity, electricity. Farmer operate electricity. Only in Liberia, farmer don't have electricity, but in industrialized country, in this country, you go to the farm, you don't even know you're on the farm in the first place, because they have all machine. The building houses in this, in this country, everything is power tool. Everything is power too. And nobody's, uh, uh, you know, using hammer and doing that. People even noting thing is power hammer. The air, high pressure, uh, you know, hammer they're using. They're not using physical hammer to nail stuff here because it's all power, power, power. So electricity is key. Now, the Liberian government just told you a whopping $25 million for the airport, small as it is. Well, uh, I'll share a video with you. I think Heron Costa also shared that same video on his, on his page. But I came across another video too, also of the same thing. But India have done a very good job um, with the solar uh, um, um, farm. So the solar solar farm will generate good electricity for Liberia. And if the, if the airport generate more electricity, that electricity can also be sent to the grid. What that grid means is LEC take the current and distribute it to other people who needs the current. If the airport solar farm generate enough electricity that they, 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 they don't have storage for, they can also send that grid. In New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey, where you live, um, you can find almost all the street light now is powered by solar panel, and that same solar panel also sending uh, uh, um, service back to uh, PSENG, which is a power company in New Jersey. Um, so that's how that size operate. So solar is one of the renewable energy out there and it's cost effective, and it's good. And Liberia now spend, 25 million dollar for that Liberia can spend 10 million dollar or less because our airport is small and because our, our population and all that different thing. india a big nation of india uh, over a billion people in india and their international the major international airport is 100 percent solar you can google it you can youtube it don't even google youtube it you will find, you'll find the content you'll watch the video and Heron Costa also shared that video on his page as well. So you can find it if you don't know how to YouTube. Whatever. Go on Heron Costa two days ago. Page is on there as well. The Liberian uh, um, deputy, uh, director of the RIA was also there um, six years ago negotiating this whole thing. And then everything fell down on Royce. So we cannot be talking today of Liberia in this 21st century and we having electricity problem. That is it. It's an F. For the president operate article function in Liberia. Look, let's be serious here. No politician in the race today, as we speak, that have put forward a clear plan, a clear roadmap as to how they're gonna govern in Liberia 2023 if they are elected. Nobody, even JMB put out something called an ARTS. The ART has no education in it, the ARTS has no healthcare in it, the ARTS have I mean, how can you put on a plan that have nothing to, to help the people? So you talk about you know agriculture. How do you pay for the agriculture? There is no, it does not even say how you're gonna pay for it. You saw him Mr. Cummins' plan right now. He's telling you where the money is gonna come from, how it's gonna be paid for. He's telling you where are we gonna get this money from? A money who will crack down on corruption, wasteful spending, who will go after our natural resources, get the full value that we're supposed to be getting of our natural resources. We will not sign 
or uh, 25 years, $800 million asylum method deal and be running, parading the street and say, oh, it's the best deal. Do you know how much stuff they're getting out of Liberia in 25 years? We will not sign Bocos deal that APM terminal, that it's a killer to the Liberian business sector. We will not sign a Bocos deal like that. We will not sign Bocos deal that Eton and Iboma that we didn't even, our lawmaker didn't have, have the chance to read in, in for the eight hour to rectify that loan. That is still a law today in Liberia until they can redo that. But currently, as we stand, Eton and Iboma is just the law. Our, our lawmakers are already signed up on it. So, what, I, what I'm trying to say here tonight is that don't be carried away. Those of you making comments and all the different things, don't be carried away. What you need to do for yourself is to sit back. We are so why, why are we? Why are we, you know, not anxious enough to get to know more about Mr. Cummings and follow his plan? Why are we asking, oh, why is he not doing this? Then I mean, you bypass something called service in Liberia. The normal days before the war, they taught civics in school, right? Those of us that went in exile or in the Ivory Coast, Ghana, and, and Guinea, and other places, we learn civics in school, in refugee school. So it tells you the function of government and how government operates and all the different things. You learn that in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and all that. So why are you you going to come and say, why is it Mr. Comey is not doing this? No, he cannot because only one government at a time. If Mr. Comey is not running your own government outside the government, y'all say the man will overthrow George Rea. Y'all the same people going to be on. So Mr. Comey is a law-abiding citizen. He will not do anything that violates the constitution of Liberia. And that some people say, but we, Mr. Comey is weak. Why is he going to court every time? He's going to court because he's following the rules and regulations of the of, of the law uh, uh, in Liberia. So if he's supposed to show up to court, he will show up to court. Again, this man has lived his life abiding by rules and regulations. That's all he knows. He knows how to follow instruction. He you knows how to follow rules. When are you in Liberia say, hey, the law say you cannot urinate in the street. You stand right there and urinate. You suck a, 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 a mango and chunk this uh, the, the, the sea right in the street you do everything but you come by and say why people don't clean it Moru and Moru and i was in a bank here in america at one of west fargo branch branches and he stood in line let's be honest today can Moruba Moru go to uba bank or lbd or any other you know uh, commercial bank in Monrovia and stand in line absolutely not he would not do it matter of fact he may not even show up to the bank you will pick up phone and get call somebody, call a teller, send somebody to the bank, collect his, his fund, right? But he stood in line here. Say, Anthony Gay said, he and I were in the same bank. I even shook his hand, right? I spoke to him. We chatted a little bit, and he went in his line. Guess what he happened? He was in that line. He made a mistake on his on a, on a, on a bank slip. He had to go back and correct that mistake. And guess what? He didn't go straight back to the teller. He went back in the line. Will he do that in Liberia? No, but he knows how to do it, right? Yes, he knows how to follow the rules and regulations. Why am I why am I using him? I'm using him because he and I was in the bank together and I saw him performing that. I was like, oh, so the guy didn't know how to set up and stay in line, but it don't stay in line in Liberia. So yes, um uh, general, it's very important. Yeah, and that and also understand. you look on there, he talk about internet, you oh, in no, the, I'm gonna get to that. you in the IT feeds and also ever. You know yeah, that we got so fiber optic. Get to that. So yeah, you know we got let fiber optic in Liberia too. This to people. Yeah. When you have electricity, it's a gateway to almost everything in this world. Electricity will give man Sarah, who's sitting there right now, who will have the opportunity to watch this video, or opportunity to say, you know what, I can tie my cool, I can tie my cool water. And that cool water she tied, that cool she tied, will generate fun where she can buy a slipper for her son, buy a slipper for her daughter. And also buy a couple of rest or even buy a whole bag of rest for herself. That's that same electricity. That electricity will help our children when they come from school and do their homework and prepare themselves for, 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 for a better tomorrow. That same electricity will give her access to fans so she can fan herself when she can afford enough. She can buy her air condition and cool herself. She doesn't have to live in America to cool herself. She can also cook her, her meal. She doesn't have to cook every day and maintain her food in a refrigerator. She can drink cold water and cool her thirst, right? That electricity, that one thing we're looking at that we're overlooking. Now, if she have educated, she can also contact a family member, call around the world, do video chat, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, Messenger, um, you name it, right? She can call a family member, 
what electricity she can charge her device. She can also listen to radio. She can follow the current event as well, right? And what that electricity will do for her again? It will give her a peace of mind. Mosquito will not buy her now. This time around now, she don't need mosquito call because the mosquito call, you know, will clock her nose and whatnot. She can use a fan and she can do all the devices. She can afford not to buy spray and spray around the house also and kill the mosquito. That's what the electricity is doing. Also, it will reduce crime because when the place is dark, criminal can creep in the, in, 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 in the bushes and behind the house. But when your house is electrified and you have light bulb around your house, you provide security for yourself. President, we are saying buy CCTV. Even if you buy the CCTV, if you don't have electricity, how do you power on your camera? Right? I work in telecommunication. I can tell you for a fact the camera needs to be powered on. I don't buy battery or how you know how power AC device connected to it. It has to be powered. It has to be powered. So if it's not powered, how are you gonna have your footage? Where's it gonna be stored? Right? So again, electricity, I'm saying in the simplest, simpler form. Now let's take electricity to the hospital. Right? You have people dying because generator ran out of fuel in the midst of operation. They're performing surgery and this person go off because generator went out of gas gasoline or fuel. We have seen that happening so many times at JFK and other government-run hospital in Liberia. Now, if you have electricity, there are so many other machines that will be functioning and people will have them. Look at how people are. You go, the, the, go to the maternity center in Monrovia and you'll see how women are struggling. The woman pregnant, she in pain, but she in heat, right? She's already in pain and she in, she's not comfortable. You know how many uh, 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 maternal fetal issues that we have? Many childbirth people dying, childbirth, all of the different things. So look, electricity would do a lot of things. Now, let's bring it one step further. Every month we see people graduating from high school, from colleges in Liberia, right? If you have electricity, then you will have access now to your internet because you can't have internet without electricity, right? So guess what? You can have a good paying job right in Monrovia, right in Banga, right in Ganta, right in Zedekwe, uh, I call that, not Zedekwe, but Zedekwe, right in, 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 in Hapo City, right in Greenville, Sangamon County, right in, in Grand Cru, Backleyville, right? You can have access to internet broadband internet service because you have electricity because if they will have to run broadband line, they need power to run the line. Low voltage power, but yes, they still need power to to run the line, right? So in order for you to compete in the 21st century, you need electricity. And that electricity will open doors for so many different things. Don't overlook electricity. We should not be struggling for electricity in Liberia. We shouldn't. And then the next thing I'm gonna talk about electricity before I pivot to something else that Mr. Coming mentioned in a five minute video has to do with call center. You know, when you when, when you call big corporation here in America, the call don't go straight to the company, it get routed to India, the call get routed to the Philippines, the call get routed to Vietnam, the call get routed to, to Bangladesh and so many different parts of the world because of cost, right? So they outsource those jobs. We Liberian, we speak good English. I mean, you, if you speak proper English, you take your time, the white man can understand you easier than the Nigerian than the Ghanaian. That's for a fact. We've seen that happening here. People come from Liberia, never even been in America before. They talk to white men, white men understand that, right? So we are blessed with the Liberian people. That's something we can brag about, right? You can open a call center in Monrovia. You can open a call center in, in Banga. You can open a call center in in, 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 in Ganta. You can open a call center in Greenfield, in, in Zwedry, anywhere. What that call center will do, that call center can be out of a data center or a call center, whatever it may be, but it will hire Liberians. And Liberians can answer phone. But you cannot run a call center, you can run servers and you know data centers with generator. No, because one hour of power outage, meaning the way the power go out to the airport, there are millions of dollars the company is losing. Then you in turn losing thousands of dollars because you can't pay any play, you lose the contract. So when we talk about electricity, electricity will create jobs. So many different jobs it will create. All right. Today, the government is a higher employer. Mr. Cummings spoke about growing the private sector. Why? Because he has done it, he has a proven record, and he knows how to do it. 
Mr. Comey was the one that talked about raising the national budget from one from 500 million to 1 billion or 2 billion United States dollars to compensate for the current demand of the country. These guys didn't understand what Mr. Comey was talking about. They raised the national budget to $785 million. Guess what? In that $785 million of, 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 of the new budget from the CDC led government, there is $145 million in that budget, which is loom. Loom. A projected budget with loom in it. You gotta be afraid. They three days again, the war bank gets gave this government 40 million United States dollars. Guess what? The 40 million dollar, 20 million dollar of that money is credit. What is credit? It's loom. When they say credit in in, in business term or in financial terminology, that's loom. The government have to pay back. We don't even know the interest rate. But before that, one president, we are came into office. There is also a 230 million dollar uh um emergencies cash assets that was used to pay salary all of that they were giving that money in installment that is also a loan from the imf check it out it's not free money it's loan so when you guys hear me all the day you got to be concerned but yes what these guys doing they are taking all these loans and they're going to dash it on you and i will have to pay so it is very dangerous you have politicians that come to the, the political spectrum and don't tell you how they're going to run the country, how they're going to pay for their plan. Mr. Cummings is telling you the presidential salary, whatever amount it is, I am not going to take it. That's what I'm going to do with it. I'm not all going to say that these people take it as well. I'm going to receive that money and use it to fight corruption. He talked about having a corruption czar, meaning a specific person. His true focus and only focus is to fight corruption. He will supersede and supervise the activities of the of that sector so that corruption can be minimized you cannot eradicate corruption we are not saying mr Cummings is coming out to take corruption away zero even the great united states that okay. corruption stay here but guess what it is in the way in which that when you are caught you pay the price you pay a serious price we know big name people from government from other corporations who are facing financial you know jail time right now today because they 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 committed a crime and the fair went after them and so uncle sam don't play and so look we in the anc we are very 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 much excited that we have mr coming but every liberian who yearn for a better liberia who yearn for a country that they can be proud of who yearn for a country that they want to be excited about you should be excited about mr coming because why Mr. Comey wants every Liberian to have a better Liberia. Mr. Comey says that every Liberian deserves a better Liberia. And because he said that, I can't wait for the real change. I can't wait for that real change because you know what? We have suffered for too long. Some of you are 30 years old today since you were born. All you have seen in that country is hardship, hardship, hopelessness, and hardship. But yes, what Mr. Comey is telling you? You deserve better. You deserve a better Liberia, and I cannot wait to see that real change because we all want this change. Because listen, you are not wrong to be a Liberian. You didn't do anything wrong to be a Liberian. What has happened was is that politicians have robbed you of your blessing. They have robbed you of your opportunity to strive. They have robbed you of your education. They have robbed you of your success. So this time around, they want to keep you down in that hole so you can always beg. They want to make you a perpetual beggar. They also want to make you a perpetual battle crier. Zikwe, 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 Zikwe. Zikwe will not solve your problem and will not put food on your table. Zikwe will not offer you a job. Zikwe will not give you nothing. You know what will give you something? When you put a president who put the country first, who put the people first, listen, we just had a situation where our president was up in the sky about to land 30 minutes from the airport. Guess what? Light Electricity disappear. went out. The place completely dark. The president's life was in danger. That's a national security emergency. Three times, light went off. His own minister confirmed, yes, indeed. The light went off. The place was dark. How can you have this pitiful terminal 
and no light, no electricity. All the system is down. That is not a country. Show me one country today in the world that international airport light don't don't stay on for twenty four seven. Show me one. There's none. So here's what we're gonna tell you guys. We respect Vice President Justin Yuman Baka for his service to the country, but as a stand today, he doesn't have what it takes to lead Liberia out of this mess in this 21st century. Why? He promised you and I. Do you remember that famous BBC interview that he's Mr. Fixer, that he know what it takes to fix things? He's a problem solver. You resolve the circumstances of the CPP. Well, that opportunity would have given him. He went back to Liberia. Where is he today? He ran away from his responsibility. He had never led anything before. All the position you ever had was handed down to him. He never won an election by his name. Nobody voted for the vice president. Uh, but, but, but listen, they said uh, he was there for, he said the argument, they said he was there for 12 years VP. And Mr. Cummings never worked there. So I want you to compare that too. They say he was there for 12 so, years as a yeah, VP. Yeah, it's what people always so, but say. Maybe, maybe you, okay, maybe you, I think you better, maybe you know some of the achievements of Mr. Bwaka as vice president. He has some other responsibility I show. He's the only guy with a two position president of the Senate. And he also attends every cabinet meetings. So that means he's aware of every concession that this government, that the government put together. He's part of the executive and the judiciary. The, the, the legislators because he's the president of the Senate. So tell me, you compare the two, and you got a man who worked in the corporate world with a Fortune 500 companies, his budget, triple librarian budget, and a big time. But hey, so I want to compare these two and let librarian people know this today. Well, this question has been raised so many times. Does Mr. Cummings' experiences that he brings to the table commensurate with the position of the president? And I'll say yes. What are the similarity? It's two four. So, number one, there is no one who has worked as a president before ever ran to be president. But there is one thing that is certain: leadership matters. When you are a leader, a successful leader in the private sector, you will be a successful leader in the public sector. Yeah, because decision making remains the core foundation of everything you do. You will also have an edge in the public sector than in the private sector because in the private sector is very competitive, right? So to to be a person like Mr. Cummings, who so you're breaking down. That, so you're trying to say government school and public schools. So in a in a, in a have, private school, have, no, in a pri in a private school and public school, in a private school they say eighty you pass. In a government school they say seventy walking stick you make it. <laughs> Correct. So if if you have one of the best instructor who have taught in a public in a private sector for a very long time and is brought to the private uh, public school, his teaching style will not change. The regulation in a public school may be lenient, may be yep. free, may be may, may not be too tight because you know it's a public, they got a lot of freedom to do whatever. Yep. But if that guy was a man of principle, and I have instructor like that, like there was this guy called Queer York, Queer Tally York, he taught me uh, history and geography. That man, when they say Mr. Principal Minded. My um, um, elementary school uh, uh, principal, Mr. Uh, uh, um, Eric uh, uh, Cohn, Mr. Principal, that man comes to school, his dress code, shoe, everything from top to bottom is neat. No teacher will come to school, your, you know, your, your clothes look funny. I've never seen his clothes wrinkle. Never. Never. Right? So, there are people doesn't matter where they found themselves, whether in the public sector or the private sector. They labor to that standard. And Mr. Cummings is one of those. You will never go to any event that Mr. Cummings is supposed to attend and he comes there late. The latest he will be will be 15 minutes to the time 
and he already in the building. Most often he's 45 minutes to the time in the building already. It happens here. In the PA area, we had event quite twice here. He came and he was on time. In DC, he was in the building before most of the leaders show up. Look, he's always like that. Even at the event when he goes to in Liberia, he's always on time. He's always on time. You would never take that away from him. That is principles. Mr. Yeah. Kwame also said that he will be in the office of the president on time so that every cabinet minister will have no excuse. He's not going to go to the office 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. No. 6 o'clock, 6.30, he's, he's in that office. By the time you make up your mind, Mr. Cummings was here in America running up to 100 plus countries across the world. The time zone, he was on time for all his teleconferences. He was on time to all his meetings. You all, look, he had to manage that. This is the life that he have lived. Sometimes we'll have a teleconference here in America and Mr. Cummings is in Liberia. And when they say Mr. Comey will be in, on the line in the next five minutes, before that five minutes, and Mr. Comey will say, I'm here, guys. He's on. This is organization. Now, decision making remains paramount. He's also a negotiator. He knows the subject matter. Look at how he chronologically uh, put everything into the chronological order when he was turning over to Nyomli Kanga Lawrence. Senator Lomri Kanga Lomri received a clear detailed operation activities of Mr. Kumi eight months as a CPP chairman. When Mr. Ue turned over to Mr. Kumi, not a single piece of paper was given to Mr. Kumi. Not even a note. When Yomri Kanga turned over to JMB, we don't even know what she turned what she said. The document will be forwarded. She said the document will be forwarded. Where's that document? What did she accomplish? JMB also took over the leadership. What did he accomplish? But we know what Mr. Cummings accomplished because it was it was chronicle, it was put in order, and was submitted. And Mr. Cummings also published that. You go on Mr. Cummings' page, you will see that. And if any one of you want to dispute that, inbox me, I will send you that. How the CPP were registered, how the CPP get certificated, how we uh, put out 15 candidates in the senatorial race 2020, and we came up with six senators. Senator seats, uh, all different events, how CPP have present and were viable. So Mr. Cummings' leadership at the upper echelon of the corporate world, commensurate with becoming the president because he used to meet foreign leaders, he used to meet dignitaries, he used to meet all type of Mr. Cummings is the only one in the race right now who can sit across any mortal Mota International Business Corporation and tell them what business model will be good for them in Liberia. Because why? He has lived that life and he can speak their language and they respect him because of his integrity. Nobody in this race today can sit across a big motor national company and make that case. That is a fact. Show me who is in the race that can sit across a company today and speak their language and say, listen, you can invest in Liberia because based on X, Y, and Z, you will have X, Y, and Z. They can speak that business jargon. Who is in this race that can do that? Our number one problem right now in Liberia is the economy. Mr. Cummings is a trained financial expert. He holds an MBA in finance. And he has worked in that area. He has record to prove. He has managed new sum, billions of dollars. So, He's the only one in this race who has what it takes. And I want to send this Olish branch to the Gonglo team, Councilor Gonglo. He's one of those persons who has name recognition in Liberia. But politically speaking, there is a challenge for him. And since one, no, no one political party right now can win an election in Liberia, it will be a perfect fit that you join Tim Cummings. Your talk and see where you guys can compromise each other and, 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 and see how best you guys can do some work together. You need him? He needs you. Y'all will, you know, work in a way that the Liberian people will benefit. But 
Mr. Cummings has an edge. He has been tested in the electoral process. Council Ngonglo has not been tested in the electoral process. Yes. He's an astute lawyer. Yes. He's a poor man lawyer. Yes. Him a right lawyer and all the different names. Yes. He been to politics for a very long time. But he has not been tested by the Balabas. Mr. Kumi has been tested and we know what he what he we were able to accomplish today. Mr. Kumi is top three politically in Liberia. If you call Judge Ria, JMB, the next person you're gonna call is Mr. Kumi. It's no doubt. ANC is the fastest growing political party in Liberia. Yep. This is the reality. So Mr. Kumi, what he brings to the table, the fact that he can sit across the table and discuss with the business people multinational corporation and speak their language that's setting apart what do we need in liberia we need investors to flock to our country to create the opportunity for us to strive and mr cummings is close with that okay uh, and let's go to his we, are, uh, we, we, we we got we got about I got about 10 more minutes here. I want you to go back on to, he talk about uh, 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 agriculture because if you look at the whole rest issue in Liberia today, Mr. Comey said oh, yeah. his, before the end of his first term, he Liberia will be able to feed himself. I know sometimes it will sound funny to people because no president have done it, but Mr. Comey have said it. And even nowadays, United Nations have made it so easy for third world country. I was reading some report where they said that if any third world country who really serious to invest into agriculture at least must put aside 10% of the national budget into agriculture, that means you read it. But our first budget was 0 0.4. I think this other budget, when they increased it, now they took it to 1.1. So it stayed at least when you look at it. So tell me, because... For what I see, I have never seen no candidate who broke everything down. And Mr. Cummings is telling us how agriculture will be like. He talked about the agriculture, the agriculture, I mean, fisheries and everything combined. Just give me highlights on that, you boy. So if it comes to agriculture, myself, I can speak directly to that because I'm into that. Um, agriculture is, is the foundation of the Liberian economy. And what do I mean by that? We do have currently... Liberia possess up to 46% of the rainforest in West Africa. Yep. Our soil is rich. Our land is vast. We have the condensed rainforest. So what does that mean? That means, yes, Mr. Kumi is right. In six years, with the rightful amount being invested into agriculture, Liberia can be full sufficient and they can export rights outside of Liberia. We have the land, we have the soil that is rich, and guess what? All we need is a president with a political will to muster the courage and invest into agriculture. I have tested the soil in Liberia, and I can agree with Mr. Cumming 100% that yes, indeed, agriculture will create more jobs once we invest. We'll create food sufficient and food security, and guess what? People will be healthy. Because, you know, you're not eating, you know, three, four, uh, three times a day. You eat one meal and then that. You are not, not to put people down in Liberia, but the reality is that many people today that will watch me or watching all right now and will watch this video to, uh, um, days to come don't have food for the next one month. They don't have it. Some of them even have the food for the next two weeks. You are a student. You're in a university. You're in different college over there. You don't even have food for the next two weeks. You are a mother with children. You are a father with children. You don't have food for the next 30 days. You may have it today or tomorrow, day after. The rest of the other day, you don't even know where you're going to get it from. That is the reality. See people sitting or standing in line for four, five, six, seven, eight copyright before politicians used to buy 
25 kg and get given to each person. Now when they buy 25 kg, they open it, they will dominate the top and they start giving people cups of rice. Cups of rice. Not even half bed or whole plastic food. No. They're giving people cups of rice down. And that's how much rice have become now a political commodity in Liberia because no rice. Now, look at what happened yesterday. You saw the president going to Freeport, taking picture. We don't know how much metric tons of rice in the country. How long can it last for? Can the rice in those very warehouses that pictures flying all around Facebook can sustain all for the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days? Do we know? We're done. There's no data. So you will take picture or video. Is that what you're going to present to your partners and say, oh, yes, we're doing well, X, Y, and Z? So agriculture, when the PAPD, the Purple Agenda for Development and Prosperity, spoke heavily about agriculture, but they are doing different things. Mr. Cummings, right. This. When we, Kofi Annan once said that the amount of money that United Nations has to invest into agriculture, imagine this money ending up in the hands of African farmers. Think about it. 45 billion United States dollars. If quarter of that money can only go in the hands of Liberian farmer. You're talking about millionaires. Right? Yeah. We eat rice 24 7. Three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes supper. And still we can't grow our own our own rice. That is insane. We have the soil, we have the people. Liberians are not lazy. They haven't been given the opportunity to strive because look at how many Liberians in the diaspora. See how much remittances that go back to our country. Are they sitting down sleeping and the, the money is being sent to Liberia by itself? No. These people are working themselves. Some people working 16 hours a day and they send sending money back home. People in Liberia right now, if you give the man a job and you pay that man on time, that man will show up to work. Who wants to be a beggar? And nobody wants to be a beggar. Yeah, very few people will be, but the vast majority of the people don't want to be a beggar. But these people don't want that. They want them to sit back and then the election time, they'll buy a few beggar right give them and win a seat and go back again for another six years or nine years. And then they come back again and do the exact same thing. So right now they are fighting this man who is showing the people the light that, hey, you have an opportunity here. Pay attention to yourself. You deserve better. An opportunity here for you to strive. They don't want that. They are telling you that, oh, the man is experienced. The man don't understand it. Listen, if you are a leader, you are a leader. I once said before that Jefferson Kochi don't understand his function as a city mayor. Cleaning garbage is just a minute portion of his job. Jefferson Kochi is supposed to be creating job, negotiating with business people that flock to Morovia. Look at the layout of our city. Look at the ocean front. We don't have beaches. We don't even have boat ride. We don't even have sea dunes there. We don't even have a lot of things in our country. The tourism center, everything. The city is dirty. This man is complaining. So guess what? The agriculture will create jobs. It will create jobs. It will also help the health sector because it will minimize the amount of people that are hospitalized. Right? It will minimize it. It will minimize it. And another thing that uh, Mr. Pumley spoke about, public health. Health awareness. People will yeah. be educated on what and how to do things. It's very important. One of the reasons why America was successful with cracking down on, on COVID and all of that is public health. Public awareness of, of, of the virus and everything. Do this, do that. You got to educate the people. Information. So, but here's the thing. They will say, oh, they don't want Mr. Cummings. Why? 
because they don't want change. They want to keep you down. They want to still be stealing from government. They still want to be doing the same thing over and over. That's what they want to do to you. Many of them know that if Mr. Comey becomes president, Mr. Comey said, in you know, 100 day, no one thing you will tackle also is the traffic in Monrovia. People dropping all kinds of way. It's not going to happen. You get in your car, you go the right direction, you driving on the railroad, you will get ticketed. You won't pay that ticket. You won't pay, you'll go to jail. Yeah, People will follow the rules. And guess what? The city will generate money to take care of other things too as well. You and I here, you know when we see police car, nobody can tell you say that police down there. Nobody. But the time you see the police car, you have to put yourself in order. Why? Because the police know not take bra, and you know you don't want that police giving you a ticket. You get a ticket when I speed a ticket, your insurance will go up high. Yeah. You get points on your license. You and I do a job that we have to drive company car. You will not be able to drive yep. company car. Right? You won't be. But they don't want that. They won't be driving and the beer bottle on the other hand and their hair on the wheel and they're drinking at the same time driving. That's why they want to continue doing. That's why they keep fighting Mr. Cummings. That's why they keep saying, oh, nobody care about him. You know the ground game that's happening right now for the ANC? More and more people are registering. The silent majority are registering, supporting Mr. Cummings. And that's the reason why we believe that Mr. Cummings is the hope of Liberia. He doesn't have all of the answer. You heard him saying, we need a government of inclusion. Meaning, the perfect example, Mariah Yakula came from the, from the United Party. You saw our October came from the CDC. Mr. Cummings will hire anyone with competence. Doesn't care where you're from, who you look like, and what's the last name is, he will hire you. Once you have the, the requisite, you know, requirement to get the job done. And so, it's not going to be CDC government where well, when you're not CDC, you're not say you know, zikwe, zikwe, that you can't you can, you, you can get a job. No. This man want a Liberia that every Liberian will have the opportunity to try. You don't yep. have to work in government to succeed in Liberia. Company will come back to that country and our people will have the opportunity to strive. If anybody have a question, well, they can there's this guy yeah, called thank Henry. You, you, you said it all. I'm uh, sorry that you came on late and we got to go. We got to get out of here. It's after oh, one okay. o'clock. No problem. And I can stay up here and talk the whole day. Some people ask me if I can <laughs> sleep. Maybe you you might see me tomorrow morning again. But this is this is the thing that we're doing. We all know that we... And for your information, and Antonin Gay, he will... He, he's an aspirant in Grand Jida County. He might be running. Don't see him small and <laughs> tight. <laughs> he, he will be running by the grace of God for Senator from, for Grand Jida County. He's doing good in Grand Jida County. He got a farm there. He's doing things for his people. he been doing a long time. Don't see him. They call him short man iron jacket. You know, most of the people you see with that kind of body, they smart. A smart boy you're looking at there. So Jeddah comes. So if you're from Grand Jida, Jeff, you watching up for him. Don't overlook him now. They say don't, don't, uh, don't judge the book by its cover. So, it's what the person can produce. So uh, he will be in Grand Jire soon. He's in and out. He's not a stranger to the people of Grand Jire. And this guy did a lot for his people, for experience from Africa to America. So just keep up, keep up the good work, my brother. We we got to protect and support our counties and support our country. So sometimes we do I'm, these things for, uh, for and, a lot and, of stuff. I will be the youngest uh, in the race down there. I will be the youngest, and I'm excited uh, that a young, if young people make up sixty five percent of the voting black in Liberia. Yeah, I sure. Senate, I, if I I will be in Liberia and I will try to go camping with you there too. So don't worry, we'll be the in Senate Grand Jira. Need to reflect the young people, right? The legislatures yep. need to reflect the, the young people. Young people should have the opportunity also. We are not too young to lead, you know. Um, they, this thing that oh, wait for your time. If that was the case, then Barack Obama would have never ever become a Listen, president. The time, in the, the time is now. In in, in said, politics, there are no every such thing miles, there's a first um, mile, a first seniority. Step. No seniority yeah. in, in politics. When 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 I hear people say, "Oh, why come he can wait?" The man is sixty-five years old. How long do you want to wait? Will you compromise your your hardship? For somebody to wait because you think a man who lived his whole life in government and 
refused to retire and want to still run for office. Look, thanks for your service, JMB, to, to, to Liberia. But you don't have what it takes to lead us. You don't. Your mobility is challenging. You can't even jog for 30 minutes. You can walk, straight walking for 30 minutes. How can you handle the presidency? You see Joe Biden can be jogging up the steps, going in the plane. Can you do that? You can't do it. I was in your presence. By looking at you in your presence, I know that your mobility is challenged. And so do the honorable thing and just retire. Right? But uh, yeah, you talk about you talk about retired. Uh Boaka ret ever got ever been retired before where he worked no. that he had to retire. No. So by law and technically the only person that retired and running for president is Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings retired, man. Mr. So, retired so Mr. Mr. Cummings not talking. looking for a job again. So even if Mr. Cummings don't win, like he, he lost the 2017, he stayed in Liberia. Out of 22 candidates, we can see no other candidate. Dr. Kier, Jonathan Milson, all these people, nobody around. Only Cummings stay visiting counties. But yet instead, people say they don't know Mr. Cummings. Or we're just trying to be so wicked and making it look as if. And don't you know that other people are saying that Kiasse, Dana Kiasse, who into this mess now, better than Cummings because Kiasse, when they were spending money all over the place and they still calling Mr. Cummings just come. This man took fifth place out of 22 candidates, 18 months into politics. You do the math. If it's a white man today, they will tell you, say, oh, 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 that guy still but, a better chance. Mr. Cummings, 18 months, 22 candidates, in, 124, in, in, yes. In, 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 in fact, five, in five counties, he came yep. third. He came third in five counties. And even when Paul talking about, when you look, you know, it, it, it's so sad. 18 months, he came mm -hmm. fifth. He had two one hundred and twenty-four thousand. If this man spent six years, do you know how many thousand votes he's gonna get? They don't want to accept it that ANC is the fastest growing political party. The difference between ANC and, 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 and CDC, CDC came with a celebrity. That's all. CDC came with a celebrity. George Manny Weir was a celebrity. He was the most popular Liberian ever you will find when it comes to soccer. Everybody loved him. Uh, uh, apart from the, uh, the what his name and uh, uh, Charles Taylor who brought war, but George Weir was already a celebrity and has his own crowd. So everybody, why the politician, the so-called politicians went after him. He's the only librarian with, with such a blessing. Don't do nothing will make you president. You don't need to debate. You don't need to do nothing. Don't worry yourself. Just sit there. We will ride on you and we'll take over. That was the yeah, plan. But we, but, but we have <laughs> we have president. We have a school card now. A report card is in our hand. He but promised us six thousand technocrat from Nigeria. You know, yeah, nowhere to uh, be found. Let me say this, uh, uh, Tony. You know, it's sad for some Liberians to believe that it is a must. You go two term, then the next person come in. They don't know the Constitution says two term every six years. You go two term, finish. Now, the first term. The people will vote for you because they don't know you. They, they're taking out risks. They will vote for you. The second term is on you. Based on your performance, that is how we're going to vote for you. And I'm sorry, Josh, we have fell into the wrong trap because those days after election, nobody say anything. Everybody will wait for election year and then they come out. But this time around, people started checking George We Are Up. When the time after six months into a presidency, people started to notice the bad leadership of George Weir. And then at the same time, Cummings were already the only candidate that was visiting counties and counties and counties. Within three years, George Weir took his first trip to go on a county tour to tell the people, thank you. Why even Ambassador Boaka was still sleeping in his house? And up to present, Ambassador Boaka have not reached to the southeast yet. He has not gone we're, even we're deep, in, deep into Lofa <laughs> County. So how this man, election, this election will not be the same. So no, when you I know tell people saying? that it's between Cummings and George Weir, they don't believe they, it. They, 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 st they still talking about entitlement. They're talking about, oh, the people no. already know the man. Why the man should go campaign? You see? The entitlement Joe syndrome Biden, now, 
Joe Biden was the youngest senator in America at age 29. 29. He got elected US senator. senator yes. He served 36 years as a senator. But guess what? He has to campaign after 36 years serving as senator and successful senator, not just vocal senator. Because there are legislations he passed in this country. The women right to the the, 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 the vote in this country, all this stuff. Uh they I mean, this guy before he even became a uh, 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 a senator, he was doing pro bono job in Delaware, public yep. defender. You understand? This guy did work for people for free. All right. So again, when you're ready, oh, but Joe Biden can be president, so Joe does that you remember Biden can be president? <laughs> Let's compare the two. We can see Joe Biden's accomplishment here. Where's Where's JMB accomplishment? LPIOC. Well, in fact, dead. we still see LPIOC, Joe Biden. Dead. We see Joe Biden accomplishment from vice president. We, it's, it, yes, yeah, he led. Let's put his he, vice president. Let's look at his accomplishment as, a, as, a as vice, vice president. president he led the you can see what he did. Out the American auto industry. Thank you. You when when when, he, when they put everything that. into his arm. Yep. <laughs> when, when they put everything. So you see, <laughs> Joe Buaka should have been just like Joe Biden if Joe Buaka was going to. Work with Ellen Johnson the way Joe Biden worked with Barack. So, but Joe Imagine Biden and Joe, Joe Buaka refused to take responsibility of Ellen administration. He refused to even take the good and the bad. He refused. Look, he trying to push this time himself from everything. Say, say whatever you want to say. I have heard vice former Vice President Joseph Yuma Buaka a man of wisdom, man of wisdom. No. I was not born when he was performing all the men of wisdom, men of wisdom. What I've seen with my own eye, what I've observed of him, this man, I have not experienced his wisdom yet. No. He has always ran away from responsibility since I have known him, since I've been hearing and following him. Maybe his men of wisdom were two, three, four, five decades before I was born. I don't know about that, right? But what I can say, here is the man. You are giving the responsibility of a vibrant collaborating political party. The name CPP, when CDC hears CPP, they be shaking up. Yep. We defeated CDC in Mozzarella County twice in their own backyard. And right now, C CDC had no chance in Mozzarella County. You sat there and allow CDC to manipulate Bernie Samuka, when you were a vice president, when the whole circumstance happened, you sat there when APM 10 minute deal was signed into law. Yep. As the president of the Liberian Senate, you sat there with all the other Boko 66 concession deal. And yet, you received 18 endorsements from senators. That still didn't give you the presidency. Then came the CPP. It is your turn to lead. You say, oh, no, that you postpone the time. It didn't do it. You try to dodge it. They pressure you. You accept it. Then you came to office and you keep shipping blame. Oh, this man can't come to meeting. Oh, Mr. Coleman can't come to meeting. But Mr. Coleman show up to meeting. You can't do nothing. Then you came to America after your tour and promised BBC. The number one news outlet in the world. That yes, you're a problem solver. And then you go to Liberia and cave in from a little guy behind the microphone, a very timid guy who can't even speak out. Free the outside of microphone. You meet in him person. He's very intimidated. And here is this man controlling you and telling you pull out and you pull it out without even considering the outcome. Then you call yourself a man of wisdom. Wisdom do, does not lead people into confusion, uncertainty. Wisdom paved the way for success. Wisdom paved the way for long-term enjoyment. How can you put claim to have wisdom 
and your decision making make people to shake their head. He doesn't answer question. He responds to your question with a parable. What or not that parable he gives you means anything to the question you ask. He doesn't care. Yeah, it's what he does. He only gave you the parable because it's his same hating. And most of the parable he gave you, for instance, those of us that live in the diaspora who does not understand the tradition of back home, he gave you a traditional parable that had nothing to do. So he leave you in suspense and walk away. Is that wisdom? That is not wisdom. You know what wisdom is? When you respond and that thing, that person think about it every time and it is like, wow. Look at the logic in this thing. Look at the logic in this thing. And they continue to wonder how you put that together. That's wisdom. Right? When Dr. King spoke about this thing, he spoke about in his life. And people today, he said, I have a dream that one day a white man, a black man will sit across the table and discuss. And people are like, but how did this happen? And we saw the rise of Barack Obama. Today, we saw Ketanji Brown Jackson, a black woman, as a Supreme Court Associate Justice. That's the dream that is manifesting, right? Where is your wisdom, GMB? Where is your wisdom that you see in the nation is drowning and people receive 30,000 United States dollars and you kept it quiet? You didn't speak about it. Where is your wisdom when you sit there and allow yourself to be pushed around by folks who just seeking a chance to steal instead of seeking a change? Where is your wisdom that the party can sustain itself, but you sit there and you think it's okay? Liberian, you were not born to suffer. Don't accept suffering because all you have seen is suffering. There's more to you. That land is rich. You're only struggling because of the wicked leader that we have had. Yep. If they love Liberia so dearly, we will strive and enjoy that nation. A small country with these vast resources. Do you know how much one timber costs, one keeper uh, uh, feet of log costs? Do you know how much a metric ton is for a cocoa, a world dry good cocoa beans? Think about it. Uh, do you know how much a metal sheet costs? All we do, we extract the iron ore and ship it out of Liberia. We don't even process it in Liberia. All the high rise buildings you see are all steel. You can't build a high rise building without steel. Liberia was once our number one producer of iron ore. We're supposed to have a steel plant in Liberia, making metal sheet to sell to the outside world. And we be frank, more people, money. People, people don't know we. We started it doing a free zoom. Look, we're doing free zoom. They they still raw. We're doing it all there now before the whole thing messed up. Yeah. So when Liberia is importing steel raw, that's something wrong with that picture. Yeah. When you got iron ore, then you importing steel raw. It doesn't make no sense. We got rubber, but we importing tires to Liberia. It doesn't make no sense. You can recycle everything. To make a car tire, you can use a recycle rubber. Car tire is a raw rubber. You can't use recycle rubber to make car tire. No. You cannot. They have tried. It didn't work. They have tried. So Liberia used to be one, number one producer of rubber. I think we're we fourth or fifth now on the list. Indonesia, Nigeria, and then tapping us in rubber. Yep. All right. Africos. When we went to the Africos, there were no, there is none of people started planting rubber trees. Africa, even tapping Liberia in rubber. Are you just kidding me? I was yep. a kid when I went to Africa. That's when the people started planting rubber. 
That's when it started playing the rubber. I'm a grown up now. Look at the people, rubber is doing good. So, listen, don't be afraid of Mr. Cummings. He's not coming to put you in jail. You will only go to jail if you do the wrong thing. Yes, you will go to jail. You will be surprised when Mr. Cummings become president. Government official, top government official, who invests some money will go to jail. And the school student will go there to go see them. It will be their field trip. Go see your lawmaker, your ministers, bam, bam. It will be a touristing area. Like people will go pay money to go see these people. Government will generate money from that as well. That's what they don't want. All the other people that kind of said big talk show hosts that don't want Mr. Comey, and they used to be talking about a better Liberia, better Liberia, better. Why are they not embracing Mr. Comey? Guess what? With Mr. Comey's, he have told, if you are behind me because you want a job, then forget it. Yep. The ANC people are aware. Mr. Comey have said it over and over. If you are behind me just because of job, then forget it. You must be competent. You must have the capability of doing that particular job. If not, you can't get it. And so, are you willing to compete? Another thing before I leave this show tonight is that Liberia don't like competition. They pretend. And the people say, let's compete. Yes. So, when Darren Delon can publicly say he leaning Bwaka, Yomli Kanga can say she leaning Bwaka, but it's not okay for Musa Belide to say, I'm leaving commies. It is okay for Mr. Yue to say, oh, I'm going to throw all my support behind JMB. But it is not okay for Mr. Cummings to lobby delegates. So where is the equilibrium here? What is, what, come on. What's happening here? You're seeing the devil stand there? Now they say, oh, but Mr. They say, oh, okay, we'll do black voting. Black voting is unconstitutional. Then these same Bocos Garden come again. They think that it's so smart. They're going to, you know, manipulate the people's mind. Oh, the electoral college in Lab in America is, is black voting. That's false. That's lie. You are told a lie <laughs> to so many people. And yes, why electoral college is not black voting? Because each person, one person, one vote happen. If it's that done, then whoever wins that state proportionally gets some state will not take all. Other state, you split the delegates. All right. Whoever had the 360 delegate required, 370 delegate required to win the nomination and th the presidency is when the super delegate or the electoral college can vote. You already won. They will not give it to you if you're not winning. So each state, like California, get 55 electoral college vote. So you must understand the delegate count. And that delegate, in order to obtain the delegate, one person, one vote has to take place. Yes. With what the Unity Party were planning, is not one person, one vote. Black voting at me, they will go, all the 312 delegates will sign one paper, and then one person will take that paper and say, I vote on behalf of them. Are you serious? That is unconstitutional. And you hear your men talking about it on a show tip. You're ignorant. Stop doing those things. Don't lie to the people. Teach the people the rightful thing. That is what been happening Not a long because time. because you're behind the microphone and a yeah. group of people can listen to you so you'll get spew out gibberish to them. Don't do those things. You're embarrassing yourself because people like me, I will come and tell the public you lie. Like last night, we are on the um, LPR show. And... A senior man, you know, from Canada called Mr. Livingstone. And I mean, I have so much respect for him. But guess what he said? President Weir is the only president in Liberia who had done more things for Liberia in the first five years. That's a false. That's a false. Don't say these kind of things on the platform and you think you're going to walk free. That's a false. Not because he didn't say it, so that's true. That's a lie. President Weir will go down history as one of the worst presidents of Liberia. Hear me out. He had done more harm to Liberia than good. What good does it do for you to put a man in a concrete house in a village that you're building a home and the man stay hungry? 
The man stay hungry. All you did, you change the man's location. That man stay hungry. That man going to bed hungry and you're waking up hungry. The next day you go to bed hungry, you're waking up hungry. So I gave you a car. You didn't get gas in that car. What good is it for you? I buy you a brand new bag. You didn't get gas to put in there. What good is this for you? You throw the back on your head? <laughs> so Liberian, come, let us come to our senses here. You know when you money and it's is 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 sad to say, but when people have suffered so long, hmm, they get immune to suffering. Oh yes. They get adjusted to suffering. Hmm? The Liberia. They they accept the suffering. Right now, they're still waiting to go another six more years. They say, let's get away, that coming get away for 2029. Seriously. Why would you treat yourself like they are very enjoying the Sierra Luna enjoying the Guinea enjoying? What happened to you? The simplest thing, light, electricity. You know, look at even the light bulb in Morovia when they put it on, it's so ding. Ding. But right next door in the Africa, the land and ding. I live in the Africa for almost 15 years. I can tell you for a fact that I don't know how many times we run out of electricity like that. I don't know. Very rarely electricity go. Very rarely. I don't, there is a major outage, a tree fall on a main distribution line and they're working on it in the next 24 to 48 hours to get it back on. Or some kind of major stuff. I remember the main distribution line from mine that supplies the Jiglo region had an incident before and we went out of electricity for 24 hours and that was the most thing but guess what these guys work overnight and put that balloon back up 24 hours that was it yeah. i still remember that happened around 1997. i can't remember the month but 1997 i still remember that happened but since then that went away that went away. Do you know how many substations the people had? Right now, Liberia have five substations from those, uh, what's the name? They, they West African power pool. We got five substations in the country. But the Liberian government owed the people $9.6 million. They cut our line. We can't get no power. Hmm. So, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Thank yes, you very much, you, Tony. Before you go to bed, before you think about what you will do 2023, don't give up. Don't listen to what he's saying. The case in court was about to be thrown out. Even the prosecutor now don't know where to turn. They thought this case would help, help them. UP also don't know, know where to turn. They thought by leaving CPP were going to crumble, Mr. Coming. Guess what? They themselves are struggling now. Neck already ruled that they have jurisdiction to litigate this case. And guess what? Our position is what they don't, will they still be able to use the UP name? That is what we're waiting for. Neck will rule. And when Neck rule, we all will hear the ruling and we'll get that ruling. And so we can't say they can't leave. Nobody said they can't leave. Anybody can go to any political party they want to go to, they can leave. But they sign a document. And in that document, there is a clause. And they must abide by that clause. And if neck rules, they will have no choice but to abide by that clause. So, in short, stop being on the fence. Mr. Cummings is your choice. Mr. Cummings is the only one who has a plan. And who outlined that plan in a five-minute video. If you want to be a member of ANC and don't know how to, inbox the general, inbox me, and we'll get you your membership. We'll get you on board. What are you in Liberia? Are you in the diaspora and you're trying to, you know, join a political party? Join a winning team, join a team of integrity, and join a team that is fast growing. And if Mr. Comey was not a significant person in this political race, you will hear about him. 
But even the rooted body in front of him, first, you know, we had news. Head to head with Mr. Cummings, he cannot. He would not even debate. He can't even debate Mr. Cummings in the first place. He ran away from Mr. Cummings. We saw Mr. Cummings 2017 dominated this debate stage. But the Liberian people are still confused, right? This time you have no excuse. Your only excuse is to not register. If you don't register, then you have an excuse. But once you register, you have an option. We're not saying Mr. Cummings is Jesus Christ. We are saying Mr. Cummings has the ability to turn things around, to put our country on the path. So you, me, and the rest of the other people can experience the Liberia that we all yearn for. If somebody say they love Liberia and they're against Mr. Cummings, check them up. If they truly profess that they love Liberia and they are against Mr. Cummings, check them out because Mr. Cummings have invested more money in Liberia as an opposition leader than any one of those people in the race today. And if anyone would say he loves Liberia, and they are on their platform, but they are against Mr. Cummings, then they are not telling the truth because guess what? They have a healing agenda. Mr. Cummings means well for Liberia, and he is the choice for Liberia. God bless you. Thank you very much, Tony, and I appreciate your coming up. You said it all, at least our, in the, on the driver's seat, and I enjoy it because you said it. I really need to give a closing, but to everybody who watching, want to say thanks for watching us. I appreciate you. Without you, I can't do this show, and we're doing what we can do. So, thanks for your support. Thank you again. God bless you. And I was, I will stay. I will close up with the comments video. And for those sure. of you who have never seen it, but I will close up with that. So, bye for now. Have a good day, and God bless you. And Thank good you, night. Man. Yeah. A salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it towards helping to fight. There are five priorities we have, and we call that the what. And then there are five things we call the how we'll do it. And those priorities are as follows. Our first priority is infrastructure. Simply put, is electricity, it's roads, it's water, and it's internet and cell phone connectivity across Liberia. We have to, have to invest in infrastructure. That is the top priority. That's the basis on which we can and will do everything else. The second priority for us is job creation. There are too many unemployed, underemployed, and unemployable Liberians. The unemployment rate is over 85%. And therefore, job creation is our next priority, creating jobs for the Liberian people. The next priority is agriculture. We are a country that do not fear ourselves. These are things we can do for ourselves. We should be producing rice to feed ourselves. And my commitment is that by the end of my first term in office, we will be self-sufficient in rice production. And within education, we are focused on vocational training, teachers training, and adult education. But we have to educate our young people because again, that's how we can help them create jobs. That's how we can train farmers. And so these things are all linked together. And our final priority in terms of the what is health. Because you can have good infrastructure, you can have a good job, you can feed yourself, you can have great education, but if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. And so health is our fifth priority. And there we're focused on primary health care and preventive health care. So those are the what's we'll do for our people, for the Liberian people. How are we going to do these things? The first how is we want to engage Liberians differently in the transformation of our country. We call this hearts and minds. How do we get all Liberians to participate in the changes that are required? We're going to use arts and music and culture and reconciliation and religion. All of these things, we will be deliberate in using these things to engage us as a people in this transformation process. And so we're doing some work on how we can make those things happen. The next how is that we're going to find the money. We have to find the resources, the money 
to do all of the works I, I mentioned earlier. And the way we're finding money is first, we'll go after waste in government. You know, we spend a lot of money on things that we don't need or we pay too much for things that we do need. So for example, I believe the vehicles we buy for our government officials, we spend too much money on that. We should reduce the number of vehicles and we should buy less expensive vehicles for our government officials. We need to reduce how much they make so we can pay teachers and civil servants and police officers and the military officers and healthcare workers, people who actually do the work. We need to pay them more money and reduce the gap between those at the top and those who actually do the work. The other way we find the money is going after this thing called corruption. You know, corruption has been the bane of our country. It's, is the, the primary reason why we are as underdeveloped as we are today. And we will aggressively go after corruption. The first thing we'll do is, we will appoint a corruption czar, a minister in charge of corruption in the presidency that will coordinate all of the agencies that are meant to uh, find corrupt officials. Secondly thing we'll do is, we'll make sure we are giving the resources, the money, the right people the Red Logistics to the anti-corruption agencies, the LACC, Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the General Accounting uh, Office, the Public Procurement and Concessions uh, Commission. We will make sure they got the right resources to go after corrupt uh, officials. After that, when we find people who are corrupt, we will prosecute them, we will put them in jail, and we'll seize the assets. It will not be good enough for you just to resign. So those are the things we will do to really go after uh, corruption. I have committed that I will not take a salary. The salary that is paid the president, I will allocate it towards helping to fight uh, corruption. That's how important I think it is to, to us. And then the other way we'll find the money is we'll make sure we're getting full value, the full money we, monies we're due from our natural resources. We'll look to exploit other natural resources so we can get the funds required to fund health care, to fund infrastructure, to create jobs, etc., etc. So finding the money is the second how. The next how is we want to create a government of inclusion. We want all sections of our country to be represented in the government. We want opposition political parties to be in government because I believe, we believe that having a government inclusion will help all of us make the right decisions. It will make sure that we're spreading the resources of our country across the entire country. And then the last two house, one is growing the private sector. We will focus on growing the private sector so librarians can primarily benefit from that growth. No longer should librarian business people be spectators to our economy. And we want to actively support librarianization and encourage and provide credit and other facilities to librarian businesses so they can participate and last but not least, we will use technology. We'll leverage technology to help us achieve our goals. So those are the what's in the house. I thank you. God bless you. God bless the Republic of Liberia. Business, you catching fever. You got to serious like empty river. It ain't no stopping by the river. And as we come in, we're sweeping, we're cutting, we're moving all the way. Yeah, yeah. We come in, yeah. Where is our people coming? As we come in, we're sweeping, we come in. Anywhere we meet up, stick. Where is our people coming? Yeah, I watch you come on, man. Yeah, we come in. Business, you catching fever. You got to serious like empty river. It ain't no stopping by the river. And as we come in, we're sweeping, we're cutting, we're moving all the way. Yeah, yeah. We come in, yeah. Where is our people coming? As we come in, we're sweeping, we come in. Anywhere we meet up, stick. Where is our people coming? Yeah, I watch you come on, man. Yeah, we come in.